God, it's always so abrupt. All right, we know the premise. Let's get rocking. Hello, Alp. How's it going? If anything's weird, just let me know in chat. So, two more things to wrap up on this thing here, at least as far as his body goes, is uh, his little chest plate here. It should be pretty easy, and then these little scales over here is if I crank these up. Um, slowly. There we go. So we'll talk about his chest plate and his scales real quick, uh, how those were made, and we'll go from there. Hello, everybody. All right, so chest. Um, oh, you know what? What I probably had. Let me let me pop this down here real quick, and we're gonna go just pre-posed real quick because I probably did it across the x-axis here. I, I work <laughs> mirrored as long as I can. So we have this. Okay, good. So we're just gonna recreate this chest, please, real quick, and it should go pretty quick, I think. So I'm just going to Alt-Tap him, and I'm going to hold down Shift, turn off the eyeball so I just see him over here, and I'm just going to kind of dial in where his chest piece goes, or more likely what I probably did was duplicate him off. Um, still in solo, uh, you know, we just have his eyeball on so we don't need to go to solo mode. And then I'll go in here with my mask pin. I might even go lower. I might, sometimes I'll just drop this down, because if I know I'm going to be chopping this out, and, you know... Let's say subdivision level two, delete higher, delete lower, and go through here and be like, okay, I want the chest piece right along here. And if your geometry is low enough, so we'll mask this out, holding down control, control alt tap to sharpen this up. Go in here to, what are we looking at? Uh, edge loop, mask border, and then we're gonna control shift tap this and then say delete hidden. Um, now, at this point, you could just do a quick extraction. What I tend to do is just do like a zero mesh half, a depth size down to zero. Uh, you can turn key groups off. And if zero mesher, if you don't know, is underneath geometry. Zero mesher, and oh, I should probably shout this out too. So, if you want to see the block out of this from start to finish, you can go in here to videos and you can see my little Ninja Turtle section right here. So you can check that block out out if you are brand new to zbrush and have no idea what i'm doing which probably wouldn't be too many of you by now um, you can go in here to my created playlists here and then probably a good as place as any to start is this intro to zbrush new and updated enough to kind of get you cracking in there uh, same thing on my channel it'll all be broken out into these are a little more granular 21 to 2021.6 uh, 0.8 eventually probably at some point, so check those out. Hello, Rindia. Yes, Siri Mesher is, uh, I, I constantly using Siri Mesher to quickly, you know, kind of dial in. And in fact, I might even go half, Siri Mesher half. Now, if I'm happy with this shape, you know, I can even go in here to dynamic, turn this on, smooth subdiv down to zero, thickness up. And if I want the plate to just be sitting on his body, I'm going to take this offset and set that to 100 so that as the dynamic geometry just comes out from the original mesh, which is what was just sitting on his body. So I can turn both these on now, and now I have a plate just sitting on his body. Now, it may not be perfect, so what we can do is we can go out of dynamic mode, and at this point, what I probably would have ended up doing is going in here, holding down control shift and slice. And I think you kind of see this in the video, where I just go through here and kind of fine tune, you know, where I want this to go. I have X symmetry turned on, but slice only works across one side. You can use knife, but, I'm not filling anything um, like any geometry and so I'm gonna do a quick mirror uh, deformation mirror geometry modified topology mirror and weld isolate this delete hidden zero mesh same keep the same poly density and call it a day uh, if we again if we turn on thickness there's our thickness here um, if I need to make some minor adjustments maybe go into move accu which is the move brush with accu curve turned on and there we go we're off to the races we're feeling good and we got a little chess piece here. And uh, you could have used just Dynamesh to do this, but what I like about this is I always have access to a front and a back. Now, if I want it to be real, dynamic apply, then I usually turn dynamic on and turn thickness down, just to make sure I don't accidentally have dynamic later on where thickness is causing problems. Um, and now if I want to go ahead and start sculpting detail on this, um, I like to do a quick crease PG, which is under your crease menu. That's going to crease all your polygroup borders. And then I'll go back in the dynamic. Um, You'll see my custom menu here, I have crease level of two. 
smooth sub of three as opposed to having to go down here into my crease level down here and then my smooth sub dip up here and I can start looking for any areas that I may want to crease and generally speaking I can go into my crease menu and go into crease tolerance and just hit that button I can even drop this down a little bit and that'll start grabbing some of these corners if it grabs too much in this case it's okay but you can fiddle with that number a little bit now the most important thing for this particular piece if you're going to be sculpting on it um, oops yeah if you're going to be sculpting on it and you're going to be like hey it's really low res, but it seems high res. Well, that's because you have dynamic turned on. Um, if you're liking this creasing and fall off, just go ahead and hit apply. Now you have real geometry here. But like I was saying, the most important thing is if you're going to be uh, sculpting, make sure you have back face masking on. That's going to be under brush auto masking. Um, mm -hmm. Back face masking, you see, for I have Alt F assigned to that. And the reason I have it out here in my interface isn't because... I'm going to go and press it. It's because if I have a bunch of stuff over here and I don't see my brush settings, I just want verification that it's on or off depending on what brush I'm using. So if I have the move brush and I want it on and go through here and I can pull out thickness and it'll leave the back face alone. And I'll use that quite a bit. Just pull out a little thickness where I need it. Um, but then oftentimes it's like, okay, I want to move this whole thing around. Oh, uh, what's going on? Oh, I have back face masking on. Turn that off and now I can move the whole thing around. Uh, especially if you're going to be dynameshing. So let's say this was dynameshed here. So we have uh, dynamesh, say no. And you go through here and you don't have backspace masking on and you dynamesh. This is where this comes in. You're just pulling through the mesh and making it really thin right here. And that's happening because your brush size is way bigger than the thickness of the mesh. But if you turn on backspace masking, if the camera can't see it, your brush can't see it, and you're good to go. Uh, and then as far as the detailing of that, I think, what did I, I mean, it just looks pretty, you know, let's go see the making of this. If you want to see the making of, here you go. There's a bunch of stuff in here. And as I'm doing live streams, I'm going to be populating them in here as well. Um, and it just looks like there's just general cuts along there. So if I'm doing general cuts, probably a little Damien standard, maybe. To kind of go through here, yeah, there's one down the middle. Oop. If you want to do a straight line, just hold down shift and just go straight down like so. And, you know, let's make sure we have back face masking on for this just for the heck of it. And then that's about it. Uh, in this case, too, if the if the divot is pretty, pretty wide, pretty healthy, uh, I may go in just with my standard brush. Uh, maybe crank that lazy radius up. That's under your stroke, a lazy mouse. And then we'll go through here and kind of, you know, beef that up a little bit here. And I'm trying to see if there was any special, any special sauce in the detailing of it. I think the I think the detailing of it was similar to the turtle shell, which if you missed that, on my YouTube channel, down here, look for the big blue genie. This is all past live stream. So there's part one right there. Um, yeah, and so at this point, God, I probably just went through, I'm going to, lazy radius, I'm going to turn that down a little bit just so it's a little bit more responsive uh, to where my brush is, maybe put it at six or so, and just go through here and kind of pop up some edges, and in fact, sometimes what I would do is I would go through here with my pinch brush, and then I would go down in here to elasticity, crank up simulation iterations. Um, this is at half a million polygons, so it's just going to act like a pinch brush. It's not going to simulate anything at all. Because you see if you have dynamics, our max simulation points are at 250, which is kind of fine. Um, oh. This is Dynamesh. The heck with Dynamesh. I don't need Dynamesh there. Um, I just did that as a demonstration for the thin mesh. If I'm going to do this, I'm just going to have subdivision levels. It's going to behave more... Um, oh, and I'm also going to do uncrease all. After I'm here and it's all creased where I want, I can go through here and um, you know we can actually make this follow the muscles. My, my original one was more turtle shelly as opposed to a muscle enhancer. Uh, this one, you know, you can go in here and do whatever you'd like. Um, so yeah, a little bit of Damien standard brush, maybe a little bit of standard brush and then go through here. And now I have subdivision levels, which is going to help me with cloth and also help me with just moving volumes around uh, at different subdivision levels. So, and I'm not going to be doing anything crazy like 
using my snake hook brush to do anything like this, you know? If I'm not gonna be stressing the geometry that much, then zero measure is fine. Of course, we all know by now, I can control tap these points in history, remesh it, project back that detail, so I never really lose the ability to make large changes if I really want to and maintain my subdivision levels. Um, but just something to consider. But anyway, so now I'm sitting at 55,000 points, which is plenty good for going into my pinch brush here and just dialing in. It's gonna look kind of wrinkly at first, but it's really just to kind of give me, to enhance those ridges that I have. Um, and if it's giving you too many wrinkles like this, you can even drop down in subdivision history. And again, that'll just focus on the, the outside ridges, kind of enhancing those. You can use, um, what's it called? Um, uh, <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember what names are. Deformation contrast. You can just go in here and just contrast all this stuff up, or you can do it with a brush. B C uh, contrast delta and contrast target. I'll probably just do target. You know, just go through and just do like a quick contrast pass. You know, just to kind of get those things up. I may have even gone in here with B L A, the blob brush. Sorry, the layer brush and gone through here and just done some very light layering effects kind of like I did on the turtle shell just to kind of there you go control D to subdivide um, probably go around the this border here isn't really doing it for me uh, one thing we could try I mean I, I kept it too sharp I think so I'm gonna go knock this down with trim dynamic just to kind of get, and you can also use like the clay brush with um, alt held down if you want to kind of pull in um, that, but also trim dynamic works just fine too, uh, in some cases. And if that doesn't ever work, then switch over to clay brush. It'll probably get any edge cases where they conflict with, you know, topology here. Damien standard, blah, blah, blah. And um, again, make sure you have back face masking on for all your brushes, which I haven't been doing. If you wanted to set back face masking for all of your brushes on startup, just a reminder that your brushes on startup are in here. You would basically go through every brush that you want to change and then go into ZBrush 2021. So C, Program Files, Pixel ZBrush 2021. If you're on a Mac, find out where that is for you. And then under, it's going to be underneath Z Data brush presets. Um, I always control C, control V, make a copy of your brush presets, then go in here and you can save over these. If you mess something up, you always have a backup. So these are where your startup brushes are. So for me, for example, on my smooth brush, I have that and it's just smooth. I don't know what one, two, three, and four is, but smooth down here is the default startup smooth brush. I set that to be smooth stronger. So under brush, Smooth brush modifiers, you're gonna see weighted smooth mode is set to one. By default, every time I come into ZBrush. Um, I'm gonna go back to the pinch brush simulation iterations down to zero so I can actually just pinch. And then we'll go through here and just refine this. So, I don't know, turtle shell. Um, and then again, I kind of knock that down and then maybe I wanna go back in here and kind of pull out a little bit of a ridge. You could even try to do something like this. Let's go down subdivision level three i'm gonna hold down control shift do control shift select lasso i'm gonna grab this poly group or this poly loop right here invert it control shift x to expand control tap the mask control shift tap to bring everything else back control tap to inverse and then you could even do an inflate along here to kind of maybe inflate balloon might be a little better and now they have that mask you can actually go up in one solution and then go down here and maybe try like a little inflate Balloon, no. Hmm, inflate. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Or just manually go in here with your in flat brush. And there you go. Just gonna bump that up. Little ridge. Uh, and if you wanted to, you can control tap to invert that. And then uh, you can play around with if there's anything specifically on that border edge you would wanna. I don't know. Now that it's mass, you could go in there and, you know, knock that down with a little bit of standard brush, maybe. So. Okay, let me get caught up here and we'll keep moving right along. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, 
You recommend ZBrush for adding small things like damages, cracks, etc. I'll see about character creation where I am more focused on props. Um, using ZBrush first for damage and cracks is like a 2008 thing to do with ZBrush. Um, if you're going to create something in ZBrush, you can create the every, every everything in here that you see was created in ZBrush. Skateboard, this little headset. Uh, we'll be go covering over this a lot of this today, the entire arcade. You know, so for me to go into another program just to model this and then come in and be like, oh, let me put a little bit of dust. Let me, let me subdivide the dust, this up to 5 billion polygons to put a crack on it. Number one, if it's not going to break the silhouette, I'm just going to put that crack in the texture. I don't need it in the model unless I'm going to 3D print it. Um, now, hero cracks, maybe, if it's really going to deform that surface and go ahead and put it in the high res. But I think the days of, I'm going to model over here, bring it into ZBrush, subdivide it up to 2 billion polygons, put some small cracks on it, and that's how I use ZBrush. I mean, I'm sure there are still people out there that do that. Probably a lot, but um, I don't know. To me, it's that's that's like how people use ZBrush uh, in the Stone Ages, back when, you know, ZBrush didn't have a whole lot of options, maybe. Um, but yeah, uh, it damage and stuff, like wear and tear and rust and little cracks and stuff like that, just do that in the texture, unless you need to 3D print it, in which case, sure, you can use ZBrush for that. Um, I don't use a mouse for anything except for browsing the internet. So I use a pen for modeling in Maya. I use a pen for modeling in ZBrush. It just it really helps my wrist out. Mouse modeling destroys my wrist. Um, Render Michelangelo, do you apply maps on top of a low poly or do you keep it a high density mesh? Those are all baked maps. Um, let me see. We'll open up the renderer. I threw it in. So all of this, this is 36 million polygons. Actually, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, even the teeth and the eyes, um, those are actually pretty hefty too. Um, and in part one, we went over 1024 scan data, um, links to that in order to get like the scan data wrapped to your sculpt and then uh, baking all that off. So in here, I'll show you the maps. Everything in here, I think, was baked off. You know, there was, there was normal, oh, I don't have the Pizza Hut sign in here. Uh, we'll get to that today, I think, depending on how fast I go. But uh, all of everything had was baked to normal maps and diffuse maps, stuff like this. So if we go here, it'll say full quality. So here's my Ninja Turtle. Let's grab the camera. Let's turn off safe frame. And we can see if I double click here. Uh, here's the normal map. It's all plugged in. The detail normal map is just a tiling. I think this is from... Well, I mean, I can show you how to make one real quick. The albedo map here, in fact, I can even show you that in ZBrush. Um, oh, I don't, well, I mean, I guess I can just do it real quick. And you know what I'm also gonna do? I'm gonna turn off autosave because I'm just demoing. I don't care about autosave. So in order to turn that off, because I got a heavy file in here and it's gonna take a minute. Preferences, uh, quick save, maximum duration for both of these all the way up. Now. If I go down here, well, first, you know, I do have a poly pen on here. So I'm going to show everything about this, and we'll go into Skin Shader 4. So let's say I have a preliminary poly paint. I'm going to take this in the painter later, but this is a good enough poly paint to kind of start with. You know, it's got all the scan detail on there, some nails baked in. Uh, again, that's the, the, what was it called? The hue shift that we ended up doing down here underneath our poly paint color, uh, poly paint from texture, adjust colors. You can go through here and you can adjust these colors to, you know, whatever you'd like. Um, but what I ended up doing is just doing a quick, you know, preliminary poly paint. And if I ever want to see that texture real quickly, um, underneath texture map, create, you can do a new from poly paint. So if I do, you know, st uh, standard brush. Lasso off, and I want to you know change my poly paint, new from poly paint, and it's going to take my poly paint and bake them to my UVs. It's going to transfer that vertex information to my uh, UVs here. I can, all I got to do is clone the texture off. I like to turn it off in here so it's not sitting in there, and then texture, select it, uh, export, and you're good to go. And then again, just turn the texture off. Um, so yeah, everything in my scene, in the Marmoset scene, is baked pretty much. Um, I, I, did, I didn't actually bake anything in Marmoset, I just threw it in the painter. If I ever have any problems with 
distances or anything in painter then i'll just throw it in the marmoset and bake it marmoset has a fantastic baker but uh, i didn't have any problems so just quick and easy into the texture you can also texture in marmoset if you want more information on that um there is a look dev it's kind of a twofer it's not only copy this here it's not only a it doesn't only just have like substance painter texturing and substance or and uh marmoset texturing it also has uh, how to do all that on a plotly plane so you don't have to i guess we can you know, we'll watch this together um, kind of see this in action here um zbrush compositor and there's even a manual way to do it as well if you don't have zbrush compositor you can manually go up and set up your own planes um, and just send that information over uh, so again, you don't have to actually have a 3D model. Well, you, technically you do. It's a plane with a displacement map, but it's not having to decimate or bake down or have... I mean, you do have UVs because the plane has UVs, but you know what I mean. You don't have to have a real model with UVs on that real model. You can just bake everything to a plane. So there's that. Um, let's go ahead and set this back to draft quality while it's in the background. And then... Yeah, so we got all this and we got this. And we got our new chest plate on there that we can go ahead and delete. And then uh, another real quick one here would be like the nunchucks. Those are pretty easy to do. Um, and again, we're just gonna, you know what, let's just follow along. I just need to see if the, I wanna make sure there's nothing, cause I mean, I can kind of remember how things go, but I wanna make sure that there's nothing really crazy. We already talked about all this. We talked about the shell. We talked about the chest, talked about the wraps. Uh, we didn't talk about the knee pads yet. There we go. Okay, we'll just do the nunchucks real quick. We'll go back to knee pads. Um, and if you go, you know, play this back at 0.25x speed, you'll be able to see how I did all this. So if you're familiar with Z Modeler, you pretty easy to follow along. Um, X Minima, thank you for the kind words. Absolutely happy to do it. I have not forgotten you. Um, Almost six. Uh, do, do, do. Sorry, just getting caught up. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, no way to simulate a printed model to see if it stands up on its feet. Yeah, I think, I want to say like Disney Research has an app. Um, balanced model. Balancing 3D models with movable masses. Balance 3D printed models using movable embedded masses. This might actually be, Disney Research is awesome. Um, they have an awesome YouTube channel. Somewhere on there, I think they did one where it's like you could have any shape and it'll calculate if it'll balance. That's the, I, off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, but that's the one that, off the top of my head, that's the only one I can think of. I mean, someone may, they may have done a more recent something or other, or somebody else might have too, or implemented their research. Um, should I watch your ZBrush tutorials here on YouTube or ArtStation? ArtStation's a little more granular. If you want more examples or pictures or you want to know where 2021.6 and 2021.5 is, but everything's pretty much on YouTube, so... Oh yeah, he's got a ton of buttons. <laughs> he's actually got, uh, I had to delete some of them just to get them to fit underneath the 50 meg limit, but yeah, he's got all sorts of um, free calzones, Bartman, free breadsticks, little Beavis and Butthead over here. I think he's got a Pepsi challenge, a book it. And then down here, he's got a uh, terrific piece of tough choices. Smartest thing you do with $4. You can see I when I did the texture, I didn't quite leave enough breathing room around uh, to to go through and get those perfectly uh, centered but uh, eh, it works good enough I suppose um, I textured the body on pose I you know what I textured everything uh, on the pose I didn't do anything on the a pose and then pose it uh, if I was doing this for like production and I had a, a a rigging team and you know painting weights and it went through the full production cycle uh i would 
definitely do it on the A pose, and then it would just be a poseable model that I could throw animation on. Um, in this case, it's not that. So I just, in the pose is how I textured everything. Except for, you know, the hard surface stuff like the skateboard and I want to say the arcade and the skateboard and probably the Pizza Hut Pizza were all just down center, but it wasn't really posed. <laughs> uh, do you have a special lighting setup that you use when you're sculpting? You know, I probably should. If I was a real artist, what I would do is I would, you know, go out of matte cap gray. You know, and then just I would say, oh, you know, I need to evaluate this with shadows. And so I'd go in here to a basic material and then go in here to my light. And then I could I would move this around and ensure that all my forms and details are working under different lighting conditions. Um, but if I'm being realistic, this is what it looks like 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, video for Halo 2 MCC and GDC 2015 is pretty cool. Enjoyed the information. Excellent. Yeah, if you guys... Uh, are interested in that that and the zbrush summit so here's the somewhere on here is a hate rule am i that old yeah so here's the making of what we did for uh halo 2 anniversary uh this is old so this was back when substance designer was kind of early being yes before substance painter and then the gd uh the zbrush summit 2018 is a similar talk a little bit just a different vibe different assets uh, but still kind of the same message uh, john you uh, i've been using the curry adobe so it's current curry <laughs> uh they changed a few things mine have been up to no ui options pbr choices uh yeah i am using the new one with the with the logo that's weird pt i'm using the pt adobe substance 3d painter is what i'm using um yeah, I just figured since I'm already paying, I might as well just get whatever they have, the latest one. But I do agree that it's a little weird. Uh, how long does this project take for the sculpting without the texturing? That's a good question. It's hard to quanti... I, I might, if I went through and added up the videos, I could probably give you a little bit of a closer answer. But this is one of those things I worked on at nights, weekends, uh, during meetings, you know? So it's not like... I didn't sit down and go again take a week off and do this um, i do remember some maybe something similar ish this one oh god i don't even remember anymore i i did this along with my cgma class but it this was one didn't didn't take too long it goes pretty fast in zbrush i mean speaking of i mean we can we can keep talking about this so for instance i'm just going to have my belt over here and we're going to say um uh, return dynamic off I suppose and let's go ahead and hide first turn off all these poly paints so we'll just recreate this really fast here turn this off and then turn these off here so if I want to make nunchucks I'm gonna go into my custom cylinder we'll say cylinder 16 is probably pretty decent I'm gonna turn off X symmetry and I'm gonna say well first I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna thin it out to how much I want I'm gonna say split mass point so it's on its own sub tool here and I can go ahead and position this. Sometimes if it's gonna, and I'm gonna hold down Alt while I scale it along this axis. Um, so I can just, again, scale along that axis and then I can shrink it down if I want to. Um, if it's gonna be something where I want it straight on ahead, I could use Stager, but this, this is such a simple thing that uh, I don't really need to worry about that. So if I wanna round out this cap up here, um, I can go through here, uh, group by normals, that's under your poly groups, just control shift, select, delete hidden, Z modeler, uh, close convex hole, just pull out, round it out. Let's go ahead and make that its own poly group in case I need that information. And there's the, the start of it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sometimes what I'll do is I'll use the modeler to pop this off, but generally speaking, I'll just duplicate this. Uh, again, go in here to control shift, isolate, delete hidden. We'll go ahead and pull up a cap Q mesh poly group all with your Z modeler brush and you know, whatever this cap needs to be. Um, if I do need to grab this one, I can just hold down Q mesh and hold down shift, and then I can even Q mesh and hold down shift on this one if I want to scale it out. Um, a lot of different ways to skin that cat. Uh, did I miss? Oh, come on. Delete hidden. Q mesh, shift, Q mesh with shift. And then uh, I think that's what I did. I may have put a, like a bevel on here. A couple different ways you could bevel. Uh, one is just 
literally bevel. And then if you want to round this out, insert multiple edge loop, interactive elevation, and kind of pull this out, round it out if you want to. Um, inside of here, what I might do is like inset flat island and just pull in an inset along here. Although it seemed to pick that up. Let's do this. I'm going to say polygroup poly loop just to grab this one here. And then we'll say inset polygroup island. So we can pull in an inset. So the reason I'm doing this is number one, so I don't get any scalloping. When I hit D for dynamic, it would be nice and smooth. And I'll go ahead and just run a crease along here. So this is another, if I go through here and I say, okay, just run a crease tolerance at 45, it'll do a fine job. However, this is gonna kind of fall apart. This is where you may need to put in just some quick control loops, oops, crease. And then just go in here and we'll just insert a single edge loop. We'll just kind of give this a little bit of love, give that a little bit of love. That'll hold that edge a little bit better. And then now if we want to bridge these things. We can go through here and we can say, okay, you and you delete a single poly. Uh, and in fact, if I wanted to, I could go in here and say, you know, let's slide this over just a tiny bit, just to kind of square these up just a bit. And then we can just say bridge two holes, you, you bridge this out. Uh, if you need it to be a little bit more square, we could do, Maybe even try a circle, that could work. Yeah, and then if you wanted to even pull these up, let's do this, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna tap Alt while I'm doing this to make sure I get new poly groups because now what I can do is I can Control Shift tap this, Control tap to mask it, W, hold down Control and just drag up and that'll give me an extrusion along there and something like this um, and then Let's go through here and I can say again, we'll just crease tolerance 45 D for dynamic. And we got a little thing on top of our thing. D for dynamic, of course, we'll run a crease on this as well. Again, if we need to make sure this has some support real quickly, insert single edge loop and we'll just kind of yoink and yoink and that'll take care of that. So now, um, and again, if this is, you don't want that crease, you want this to be nice and round, you can just go through here and be like, you know what, that's not really doing it for me. So we'll say crease, edge loop partial, hold down alt, and that'll go through and uncrease any of these things here. So we'll keep the creasing at the bottom. That's what we want, and that'll be good enough. So now we have this going, um, and of course make these as thick as you want before you extrude them. But now we wanna do the chain. That should also be pretty easy. I'm willing to, you can do a quick save. Um, whenever I hop out of my subtool and I want to go model for an IMM brush, I just do a quick save just in case, because if it crashes in between, it'll save my Z tool, my Z project sometimes. It'll save my Z tool most of the time. Uh, but if it doesn't save my Z project, then I lose what I was working on over here. So I'm going to take my poly mesh here. We'll go ahead and say, give me a, I'll start with a ring 3D. I don't need all that geometry, so I'm gonna go down here and we'll say initialize. We'll say S divides of maybe 16. And we can just play with these here. 16 for that's probably okay. S divides probably a little bit much. We'll knock that down to like nine or something. So if we're happy with this, we can go through here, we say make polymesh 3D. We can kind of do like what we did before if you want, just mask this out and control drag it down. Oops, make sure you just grab there you go, you can do that. Um, what I ended up doing, I think, was just going in here. Extender is also a good one. Um, extender, and you can just pull and get yourself a chain. It even creases those for you if that helps. So you can go through here and uh, yeah, yeah, let's do increase all. Um, of course, you can put in control loops if you need to maintain that shape a little bit more. And instead of going through here, you can hit control W, make it all in polygroup. Again, you can Q mesh, polygroup all, hold down shift and thicken it up, or you can literally just go into deformation inflate do whatever you want to. Uh, repeating chains are pretty easy. Just control drag this up. Got to rotate this around. There we go. And then oh, make sure these things touch. So at the end of the day, what I'm looking for is this to be repeated like this. And in fact, on the, the Pizza Hut sign, that's what I did. I didn't even make a curve brush. I just literally went in here and made chains and then went, there you go. There's your chain. And all that is, is holding down control to drag out a copy, letting go of control when you get to the point where you like it, and then we'll just keep dragging, and it'll maintain that space for you. Uh, but for us, if we want to put this onto an IMM brush, B, create insert mesh new, and then now we have an IMM brush, 
that will insert a chain. However, we want to go in here to stroke curve mode on, and then we need to look at the distance. It's not overlapping just quite enough. So we're going to go in here to uh, curve step. We'll put this down to like 0.8 maybe, and then tap to update our curve. There we go. So now we have a repeating chain. If you really like this, um, remember, you can go in here to your brush. You can save it with this icon, or if you want to just hit select icon, it'll capture whatever's on your document here uh, for the subtool. And then go in here to brush, save as. And if you're not going to use it that much, I might throw it into my ZBrush 2021. ZBrushes uh, underscore IMM maybe. We'll call this chain demo. So now when I hit the comma key, I can always just run right in here real quick to my IMM brushes folder. Somewhere in here, there it is. And somewhere in here is my chain demo. There it is. Oh, chain right here is another chain demo I did. There's a chain demo and I'm good to go. But anyway, back to here, we can go through and uh, this one I can just duplicate off these things here. So if I just merge these down because they're using the same dynamic properties here, I can just control drag this out. And then, um, you know, if I need a control loop down here because it's kind of tapering pretty bad, uh, again, I can just go through here, insert single edge loop. I could have also, um, if I go through here, control shift A, um, I can, I don't know, if you if you ever need to do this specifically on an odd axis, you can make these both the same polygroup and then inset polygroup all. Let's do a quick legacy one and then you can just literally insert edge loops on both of these at the exact same point. And then again, just hit D for dynamic. That'll maintain that shape a little bit better. And then for the chain, um, I think I tried doing like a dynamic, I mean, you can, you can try it if you want to. I put in Z spheres. I guess that's probably the easiest. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, append a Z sphere. Hold down shift and go to the bottom here so I can have the Z sphere selected. Uh, e to scale. And then really quickly, um, you just to kind of dial in the chain. So here I'm going to move the Z sphere into place. Hit Q to go into draw mode, and I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to hold down shift so that I can make these the same size. That's not totally necessary, I suppose. And then, there we go, perfect. And then you, and like I said, you could do a dynamic, um, if you watch the ZBrush 2021, what's new, you see me doing a lot of like hanging vines using the new dynamics and stuff, but for this, I didn't really need dynamics, I just needed it to follow a specific uh, path here. So let's say something like this, and then maybe up and over. Oops, make your draw size really small, so it just grabs one thing here. Now, if you ever, you know what, we'll give this a little bit of, I'm just hitting Q to go into draw mode and then W to move those things out. So there's my path, let's say. Now, for this specifically, um, if you want to, it's underneath stroke actually, you have curves helper, and you can, uh, one thing you can do is like, I want these a little bit thicker, make your draw size a little bit thicker, go in here and say, scale these spheres to your draw size. So you can quickly make them all the same size and scale them appropriately. Um, you could even do create copy Z sphere chain and then you can just say create curve, and we'll go ahead and um, hide this so you can, oh wait, no, that the curve's on there. Um, <laughs> it puts a cube in our scene and then creates a curve along here. So if you needed to, you could go here to BI brush insert whatever, and then you could, um, let's go ahead and hide our Z spheres. So you could actually use this curve, curves helper to kind of put, put this along the curve. Um, if you don't have that, or you don't want to do that, or you need just a little bit you need, you need to modify some stuff. What you can do is go down here to adapt the skin, density down to one, dynamic resolution down to zero, turn on preview, which is A on your keyboard. That'll give you geometry. Go ahead and hit make adapt the skin because this is a Z spheres. So we want to append that skin Z sphere. We'll go ahead and keep our Z sphere turned off. So this is real geometry that we've appended. Control shift. I'm going to grab our select lasso. I was going to pop these little caps off here. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden. 
Control W, make it all one poly group. And then I'm gonna use my Z modeler brush again, poly group, poly loop on these edges here. Tap Alt. So now I've got two alternating, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And now you have a path. I can even go in here and say, you know, let's polish my features a little bit to kind of round this out. And if I need to move anything or whatever, I can go through here and do that. Um, but now I have a path I can go through here. I can now do a frame mesh poly groups and then same thing, brush chain demo. And I can use this to update the curve like so. And I'm just tapping my S key and this retapping to update this. So if I'm happy with this, um, that's fine. You can also go in here if it's not, if you want it to be embedded a little bit more, that's going to be found under your brush depth here. So you can embed, whoop, just grab that down and then tap and then I'll go ahead and embed. Um, yeah, is it doing all right? Sometimes what I'll do is I'll start off a little smaller and then I'll, this is the one time I'll use my mouse, I'll come over here and I'll just very carefully be able to click on here. Um, if I have it with this, usually what I'll try to do is just tap away on a mesh, you know, so I can get rid of that line. If you ever can't do that, um, you can also go in here and just say stroke fun curve functions delete. Now it's still attached to that line. If you want to keep that line around, no problem. You can go down here. I have a shortcut to visibility hide point. So that'll hide all my unmasked or my unmasked points and I'll say split hidden. And then you can just turn this little curve off. So again, if you need it, you can keep it around or you can just delete it out of your scene. And then now you've got your chains. If you want to, you can also do an auto groups, poly groups, auto groups, hit W, control tap any of these and you just go in here and just make some minor adjustments. Um, and you can even do it, you know, inflate on all these if you want to, thicken them up. So again, control tap. Um, another minor adjustment thing you can do, if I go into my move brush and we turn on auto masking and we say topological you can go through here and you can move these around if you make this a draw size of one you can very specifically go through and just kind of move and draw size of one means it's not going to have any of that it's not going to like pull out your verts it's just literally going to just grab the whole mesh and allow you to kind of tweak uh, these verts around so have fun with that then job Cool, Kevin Marks, awesome. Oh man, big toy manufacturer, that sounds like fun. <laughs> I'm glad the videos help. Always happy to help. Um, let's see, that's true. <laughs> Some of those buttons may have been just mis misprinted, mis mismanufactured. <laughs> I'll go with that story. Uh, difference between Marset and Substance Painter, wondering if you could use one over the other. You can, um, like I mentioned before, uh, this, I used both of them to texture this one. No UV look dev. You can see them both. Give them a shot. Uh, modeling retopology UVs, texture still the way to go in 2021 for game assets. Houdini is pretty complicated, but retopology UV is so boring. Uh, eventually, within our lifetime, those will probably end up just being on the back end, probably, I would imagine. So wait it out, we'll get there. Um, now, of course, when that does happen, things will probably be smart enough to replace other tasks. <laughs> Let's hope Skynet um, doesn't know how to make Ninja Turtles super well in 3D because then I'm in trouble. That'll probably happen, maybe not in my lifetime, but I don't know. At this point, I don't know if I'd be super surprised if it did. Um, why am I not getting used to the pen tablet? Uh, it's just practice. It, I mean, when you're if you're first starting out with a tablet and you're like, oh my gosh, it's it's a weird separation in my brain. Everybody goes through that. I went through that. So, uh, how did you approach all your uh, intro motion graphics and the turnarounds? I can't remember what program you use. Vegas. Um, yes. Yes. Um, in fact, if we want to get into the arcade video and doing that in Marmoset 3, uh, I can hop into Vegas real quick and we can do like a, a, you know, like the old CRT tube TVs where it has like the rolling, um, I don't know what exactly, I, I, it'll have it in there. You can actually turn that on in the video and you can scramble it a little bit, make it look like it's got a little bit of a loose connection. Um, but yeah, that most, most of my editing I do in either Vegas Pro or Camtasia. 
a little bit in Premiere, but Vegas Pro is far and away out of all the editors I've used the fastest, like, cause I cut a lot of like sizzle videos, like really fast cuts, uh, with sped up video. Um, Vegas is crazy fast at doing that. Um, Premiere is like, if I wanted to put a documentary together and do a cut every six minutes, it's fine. But like, that's not what I do. So, um, is it possible to slice and mesh evenly spaced polygroups and trying to use panel loops to create a boat hole and want each board to be uniform width? Uh, we kind of did that. Hmm. Where's my ship in a bottle? Somewhere in here. We kind of we kind of did that. It was I mean, in a cartoony way, uh, but just kind of putting in these cuts in here. But yeah, if I wanted to do like across here the, to, to get it even, you know, insert multiple edge loops. I, you know, if I want to keep the polygroup, I can. And then this will give me nice even cuts, obviously, but this is an easy one, right? It's like, well, yeah, sure, it works in that case. Uh, but how would it work on the whole of a ship? Well, let's see. Let's go in here and we'll say, oh, let's go whole of a ship as a sphere, right? It's not, but you know what? That's how I start everything. And then we might even go in here and we might just do a quick taper and we'll just shrink that bottom down. And then, oops, we only want to do it in one direction. So I'm going to Z opacity one, zero, zero, I think. There we go. So we, we tapered this hole. And you know what? I guess we'll put in the opacity of, yes, we'll say accept. And then we'll go back in here. Sorry, I'm just playing around with tape right now. And then now I want the whole opacity in Z to be one. So when I tapered this front to back, yeah, look at that. We tapered it. So now control shift slice curve. And uh, let's go ahead and X symmetry. Ah, damn. Sorry. Floor. There we go. Uh, mirror and weld. Symmetry across the X. You know, again, we're just kind of looking for, you know what? I'm going to do a quick unify. There we go. Just looking for that shape. So we got a ship shape. And we want to make a ship. And we're going to say elite hidden, zero mesh, half depth size down to zero. Um, oops, let's help this out a little bit. Let's go in here to skin shader four so we can see it. I need to get rid of these deleted out of my life. And then uh, I can also go through and help this out with my move Accu brush here. So we got kind of a, a whole shape. And here's the other thing too, is I, I built it in so that it had the curvature in there. You could also do it flat and then bend arc and bend curve this into shape if that's a little bit easier for your, for your plank. So another thing to consider. So as far as even, you know, we adapt the size down to zero. This is pretty even, but you're also following that topology. So you can go through here and you can kind of hold down shift and let go of alt and kind of, you know, smooth these out. Those will kind of be even cuts maybe one way. And in fact, let's just work it. We'll just work on one side and we'll flip it over. X on the tree off. Say delete hidden. But if we did need planks along here, what I might do is I'm just going to run a crease, hit control D, and then we're going to say geometry, delete lower, control shift. Uh, so for slice curve, you can use brush radius. So you can go through here and this will give you even, these are even, but in between it's not. Um, so what you might need to do is I'm trying to think if there's, I mean, I could do this. It's, it's a little eyeball-y, but it, yeah, slice, 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 slice. You could use Booleans for that. It's kind of, it'd be in a bunch of extra, not a bunch, a few extra steps to go in here, add a cube to your scene, bevel along that cube <laughs> so that you can make Booleans that could go through and slice into your hole uh, at even intervals, even intervals. And then that would be perfectly straight across, uh, cut across. So yeah, Booleans for that. That seems a little tedious for me. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It's really not that bad of a thing to set up and do, but literally just use a cube with Booleans with slats or hell, you don't even need to do that. Now that I think about it, if we have this Q mesh polygroup all 
So here's our thing. We're we'll going to flip those around so they're correct. I'm just going to append a cube 3D. And just like we did with the chains, let's go ahead and shrink this down to the slat size um, or the slat in between size maybe that I like. And again, this geometry, if, if you ever want to fix geometry, uh, just a real easy uh, zero measure, half, detect edges, depth size down to zero, nice even cubes. That'll go ahead and just fix all that geometry for you. So now here, if I want to, okay, I want my slat width to be this much. There you go. And then turn on light Boolean. And there you go. And you can even adjust these. You're just like, ah, you know what? This is a better cut. Um, now, what I might do here is let's go ahead and say crease, turn on dynamic, crease, uh, keep your crease levels cranked, maybe smooth subdiv of three. I just want a really nice smooth cut. Even on this, I might even go in here and say, you know what, let's crease, turn on dynamic, smooth subdiv two is fine. And then now I'm gonna go in here to Boolean, dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh. And then we'll go in here. So this is our U mesh. This is all cra uh, garbage, but I'm gonna take all the green, delete hidden, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. And then now it'll give you these cuts. If it's having problems with, especially these ones, let's go in here to auto groups. I'm gonna pop these off to do separately because those are gonna be troublesome. We'll go ahead and say, don't say delete hidden, just say split hidden. And then we can try and see if these shapes are a little bit easier. Oh man, this one wants to, again, but get some decent geometry out of here. Yeah, not too bad. You may have to go through here and manually get some stuff going. Just turn on topological and help these corners out a little bit. Or you can just, you can manually retopologize this if you want to, but who wants to do that? And sometimes half is too much. You can do same, you know, and then just slide these things around. And in here at this point, you know, geometry, edge loop. Uh, you can just throw in some panel loops on here. Let's turn polish down, maybe thickness up a little bit, and we'll turn elevation down to negative 100. So that way you got your little, your little boot. That makes sense. Uh, you were awesome host on the summit a few days ago. Thank you. Um, Katri 3D. Happy Diwali. To all, how did you approach the bands around his arms? Slice curve, yes. And if you missed that, that was yesterday's. Down here, the big blue genie. Here, or not yesterday's, Tuesday's. Body sculpt and wrap, turtle shell creation, etc., etc., is all in there. So you can see me actually do those straps. I know in ZBrush Friday, will be updated as 21.7 days. Air station or the intro to ZBrush replacing that course. It's not replacing it, it's just for me to go and update 2021.7 while they're announcing ZBrush Summit and while ZBrush Summit has new features, I have to go and update 300 hours worth of videos knowing in the back of my head that I'm gonna have 20 new features to integrate. I was like, you know what? You guys, if you want the 2021.7 features, they're all right at the bottom of this list here. ZBrush 2021, what's new? They're all right here. So go grab them. And then after the ZBrush Summit stuff that they show, I can get all those done, then I'll go back and update because hopefully they can calm down and I don't have to constantly be updating that. So they'll get updated in the meantime. And there's not that many, like this is 2021.7 stuff and half of the stuff you're probably not gonna use daily. So it's not like 2021.7 was this huge update that was gonna be a game changer for your workflows. It's like, hey, here's a couple little things. So it's all in there. Um, Yes, Cintiq for me is a kind of a non-starter because it's right next to my, I lean over it. I've got a big flashlight in front of my face for 12 hours and uh, my ergonomics is not great when I use a Cintiq. So I have to be a tablet guy unless I'm doing really fine ink work. Uh, St. John's wondering why we choose to use one over the other and not just one of them. Um, oh, they seem to do the same job. Oh, they're pretty different. It's, I mean, you could say that ZBrush does the same job as uh, Maya, in some ways yes, in other ways no, um, as far as modeling is concerned, but they're they're kind of different beasts. But you can use both. No, nothing's stopping anybody from using both. They're pretty, you know, the initial ramp up. They're both the ramp up for those isn't steep. You know, you can you can pick it up in half a day. Cool. 
Uh, yeah, they update a lot. Uh, I think 3D concept is artist in demand. Does it pay well? Um, I would say if you're a concept artist who's not using 3D, you, you better be really good, but also like, I don't, it's just another tool in your tool belt. So I don't, I don't, in my brain, it's not, oh, that's a 2D concept artist and that's a 3D concept artist. Almost every 2D concept artist I know uses 3D as a tool to get to where they're going. So as far as like, is 3D concept art in demand? Um, sure, because that's just concept art now. 3D concept art is, a, is an, again, it's kind of like the 2008 thing of subdividing and putting scratches and using ZBrush. 3D concept art, God. Um, Gears of War, oh, can't remember. I mean, they were doing 3D concept art before I graduated college, you know. Um, it's not new. Uh, it's just it, That's just concept art now. Um, it just lasts as a daily thing for me now. It's also on your custom UI. Uh, is it just last on my custom UI? I don't use it that much, but uh, it's up here. Um, and that's just where I think they put it up there. But... Um, yeah, I mean, okay, there's the the knife brush is a big one, and the um, Adjust Last is good. Interpolate's good. They're all, Stager's good. Depending on you, how you use it is pretty good, but at the same time, again, I'm updating the 300 hours worth of videos. <laughs> and what I say is, for three videos I might use to update that information, I'm not gonna bother until I get the ZBrush Summit stuff and then I'll go back in because that's gonna have a lot more things. Um, allow export ZSphere skin meshes eventually. ZBrush skinning tool is amazing, but you can't take it out to use elsewhere. Um, ZSphere skin meshes? Uh, you can, it'll just be the geometry. Yeah, ZSphere, I mean, ZSphere skinning is basically just, probably just a linear <laughs> gradient from the ZSphere location. So I don't know that it's, Amazing. You could re honestly, you could recreate that. And then like in Maya, you just put your joints in there and then you just say, skin my mesh. It'll probably by default do the same thing ish um, with a little bit more control. Uh, what about concept artists say 3D is 80% of concept artists now? Yeah, I would. It, again, it's, it, I mean, I kind of talk about that in my ZBrush Summit here. So all of these weapons you see in here, um, can I start a video test? We're like half a day, day, run it through Substance Painter. So instead of like doing endless, I mean, we can do it. You're like here's all the thumbnails. You can just rapidly put those on a plane, the plane extrude them. And then you can just throw them in the game and you can run around with the concept. That's just an extruded thumbnail basically if you want. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't take that long to turn that extruded thumbnail into a rifle. Like I said, half a day, a day, a couple days go through, break it up, uh, decimate it down, throw it in. That's what all these things are. These are just concept meshes. So if any of these get deleted or they're like, oh, design doesn't like them anymore or we don't know if it's going to work well, instead of like, oh, this is perfect from a side view in a making of art book, but as soon as you get it to the front three-quarter view and you've got it in the, in the guy's hands from the camera view with the, you know, the FOV on that, um, and also being able to test out animation functionality early. It's not just, is it a cool picture? Great, ship it. It's, is it a cool picture? That's a good start, but does it animate well? Does it look good in engine? Do the materials make sense? Uh, is it readable? Uh, target acquisition, all that stuff that goes into what actually makes a good design has, it starts on the page, but it ends in the experience. And if you're designing just on the page and expecting it to work beautifully in every situation, you're probably gonna fail pretty hard. So again, you can just decimate the stuff down, do effects, do quick animation really fast. And then um, that's, again, that's what all of these, all these weapons are is, um, and there's a bunch of them. I'm not talking a few of them. It's like these, every single one of these weapons really quick. Dynamesh, slice, who cares? Just get it in quick, evaluate it early. And then uh, if you need to, you can do a paint over of it with the first person view with the FOV from the actual end game camera. And you're much more informed. Same thing with the mech. Tons of mech ideas in the round that you can throw in and animate, no problem. Um, of course, I would say, that's not to say that like, hell, we could just do it real quick. Um, for example, that 3D is everything. Like definitely don't, don't take that away from what I'm saying. Uh, what's a good one? ZBrush, 
demo. Uh, yeah, legacy. Trying to see if there's a there's one I could do. Uh, robots. Uh, yeah, I think that could work. Let's do bird robot. So for instance, here's and then again this is these are these are super fast goopy things. So this is the block out. You know, refine the block out. Figure out where you want to separate it. Refine these and then go to your concept. If you want to see more on ZBrush hard surface stuff, I can send you this here. Um, Hard surface linear walkthrough. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Examples of uh, artist examples down here. Here's the id um, id software presentation where they go through. The, this is the latest one that I can think of. They're kind of they do a bunch of brute force techniques for their ZBrush hard surface. Or sounded like they're pretty much all ZBrush Z modeler now. So check that out if you'd like. Let me see share here. It was interesting, uh, but they're they're kind of I put them up here and kind of the they're kind of they kind of straddle uh, brute force and then um, sub D and mixed solutions they kind of straddle that line. Um, but yeah, basics of that, and then so for instance, you know, and then here's the the concept final. So if I wanted to go through here and um, maybe figure out some of this some of this stuff because again this is just quick and again uh, it's such a mess, but bear with me uh, for instance I can go through here and I can say you know what let's go ahead and do I even want a BPR render this sure we'll do a quick BPR render and then um, actually I don't even need to screw it so we're just gonna take this here we're gonna say uh, texture grab dock and then we're gonna go to uh, texture export and we're just gonna throw this on my desktop here and I like to do just do a Photoshop so I can skip the JPEG part. And then we can just hop here into Photoshop. And then we'll go in here to, let me open these up real quick. Uh, oh, it's right there. Perfect. So we can go through here and I'm going to double tap the background. We're going to drop this layer bound down below. Default D, X, E, L, blip, 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 fill. Fill with white. And then let me go ahead and stop this so it's not playing. Uh, and then on top of here, you can go in and you can still absolutely, in fact, my CGMA class and my ZBrush for concept and iteration classes, the second week is literally going through, let's say 90, uh, and making sure that like you can stop in 3D and go through and figure out, let me zoom back out a little bit here, me up one. Um, yeah, go through an ID8 and figure out, you know, where you want stuff to go. And in fact, in this one, since we're looking straight on, we could even just use a vertical symmetry. We'll just kind of set that in the middle here. Yes, please. And then now we can go through here fairly quickly, turn this on here and, um, you know, kind of have a little bit of fun going through and figuring out, okay, I want this helmet here and, you know, this maybe want a notch in here and maybe I want a little mohawk on the top here and you can just go through. And again, just have fun dialing in what shapes you want to see. This looks like a duck bill. Do I want to change that? You know, maybe cut this up here instead. And now it looks like he's got a little smile on there. You know what? I'm going to run with that. Um, so, and then also the, the the dark gray areas that might be a little bit mungy. You can go through here and be like, okay, do I want a, a breathing tube wrapped around here? Fine. We'll go ahead and cut in a little breathing tube here. And maybe we'll have uh, you know the one hanging down from his head here, and maybe this will overlap a little bit. And then there's a little vent panel back here we could dial in and put in little vents along here, and then cut in little shadows. You know, so instead of having to do everything in 3D, you can take a step back, use 2D, and give this a little housing here. Pull this across. So now you can go through and uh, and you know even some of this stuff. You know, you, you, number one, let me zoom in just a tiny bit. Yeah, can I do a smaller step? Hold on. Um, uh, uh, don't just, can I just back it off just a bit? Come on, get, whoa, there we go. There we go. So uh, let's see if anything I would want to maybe change or, examine 
in here. I mean, you can this, here, this is fine. Uh, this can maybe, you know, let's cut down. We'll put a little breather tube or something like in here. This little panel is probably fine. And then this we can change. So again, we're just using 3D. This is a super quick concept sculpt, but it's got a lot of information in there. And then any changes I want to do, I can even do it from the right camera view with the right focal length as I'm doing paint overs and draw overs or call outs, any of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, indications of detail and all that kind of stuff. You can just go in and do that to it. Lisa Ling needing a dream is still required to get a good, 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 fitting, good paying job. Um, I do cover that actually uh, in my blog here. So do I need a college degree? I don't have an answer for that. I just take you through my boomer education from 2005. Um, let's see. Okay, it looks like I'm just on here. Um, were those animations done in ZBrush? No, those animations are all done in Maya. Uh, these are bone creation, more intuitive than the weight distribution. Other words, really well. Uh, please, please, for the future release, allow a skin mesh export. Yeah, they could probably do that. I'm not sure. I mean, the information exists, so I wonder if that could be transferred, but I'm not sure. What do I think of Bevel Pro? I used it <laughs> I used it a, a lot. Unfortunately, I used it a ton on my Bison, and then uh, for that beta, that feature was cut. So I had to go through and... Uh, oh, where is my Bison? It's on here. Yeah, I used it a ton on this thing, only that feature was postponed. So... In reality, when I was going through here and making thickness on all of these things, I was using Bevel Pro to do the inset. And I had to figure out another way to explain that during my demos to be like, well, you could also do it like this. Although in the back of my mind, I was like, I use Bevel Pro, but I can't say that. Uh, needing to acquired uh, 2D concept by old school. <clears throat> uh, and that's the thing, 2D concept art is, that's not old school, it's just, yeah, why wouldn't you use 3D? Uh, that's the thing too, is if you just want to, even something as simple, I mean, it doesn't have to be this complex. If you just want to have, um, I don't know, we'll just take this for an example, turn off light Boolean, go into solo mode. It's like here, I don't, you know, turn on perspective. You can set up your camera view. You can go through here and play with your uh, focal length in here to get it to dial in exactly what you want and then draw on top of it. And even if you want accurate shadows from a light direction, you know, we'll take this light over here and we'll kind of move it. Like, certainly you could go through and, okay, it's it's all good stuff. I'm never going to say, you know, don't learn vanishing lines and don't learn one, two point, three point perspective and all that stuff. It's all really good to know so that when you go through and you want to make even a human and, you know, from a top down view, you have a better idea of how to, you know, use perspective to your advantage. But if you know that stuff and you just need to do something quick because it's called production and you're getting paid um, to throw out a bunch of thumbnails, then maybe maybe spending your time doing a ton of you know intricate. Or if you wanted to like populate a bunch of buildings on a hill instead of vanishing lines and doing that for two three days, you take a hill, you do nano mesh or use Houdini, you take a bunch of blocks or buildings if you have them and populate them where you want, screenshot, draw over, change things as you want. Um, it just makes sense to me, um, but you know, I'm also not super duper concept artist. Um, after applying the color texture, how are you going about the displacement? Um, the displace, I didn't really use displacement on anything. The only thing I use displacement on is the uh, wall back here. So this wall, if we double click that, let's see. Here's this placement map here. So if I turn this off, you'll see I just kind of bump it out a little bit along this placement. Uh, this is all just normal information. I didn't bother with displacing anything on there. Um, I suppose you could. Uh, but, oh, that's another thing we need to talk about too. So let's talk about that. So in the, and speaking of ZBrush Summit, if we go back to that ZBrush Summit, uh, Marcine on day two, which is that's the day I hosted. Um, where is that? Let's go to videos here. Um, 
Oh boy, all these dang streamers. Zebra Summit Day 2. There we go. This one right here. Sure. Perfect. Share, start at, copy here. This, paste. Um, that's basically that. that technique is essentially how I did this. I did it a little bit differently. We can go in here. There's a Z plugin called, called what? Uh, nano tile textures. I'm just going to say create a new nano tile tool. There we go. That'll walk you through that. In fact, if you want to know more details about that, I actually have in here an entire playlist for it. There we go, nano tile. That'll I tile some seeds uh, using models. Uh, but I'm not going to do that today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one down here, this Y wrap mode plane, and you're going to see we can go hold down control shift and then hit F to frame this. Oops, let's take our document. I'm going to um, zoom out my document just a bit here. And then we're going to hit F to frame. There we go. And then control shift tab to bring everything else back. Basically what that plane is doing is while I'm sculpting here, um, it has wrap mode turned on for my standard brush or does it? Yeah, it does. So underneath brush here and I don't do this a ton. So bear with me, brush curve wrap mode set to one. If I go into clay build up wrap mode sent to one, uh, let's do shift D to turn off dynamic. There we go. So instead of dynamic turned on. Uh, it also turns off the SMT, so I can just divide this thing up. Let's go up to like, I don't know, 124,000. So here we have uh, wrap mode turned on for my clay buildup brush. My standard brush wrap mode is on. Um, my clay brush wrap mode is on. And then um, for my, I use DAM standard two. You can Google that and grab it. We're going to need to turn this wrap mode up to one. And then in the videos, you'll see me just kind of turn off polyframe here, going through here and being like, okay, I want these tiling little things. And the cool thing about this is it will allow you to get a little bit janky along those border lines and it'll still bake out okay. So go through here and we'll just kind of pop in some of this detail here. And you can do, I mean, I did three or four different patterns, um, but I think you'll get the idea. So again, we're just going through here and you can do skin direction if you wanted to, and then go through and you know, any, any number of things you want to do. We're going fast because it's a demo, but take your time, have fun with it. You know, watch Marcin's uh, presentation. He does some cool stuff, obviously. And then, okay, we got our, we got our scales like so. Okay, and then um, we'll go back in here with our standard brush and we'll just kind of maybe, oops, make sure you have wrap mode turned on and go through here and we'll kind of pop these out. And in fact, I probably even went through here, you know, I like to do this with my pinch brush with elasticity up to 100 and going through here and you know, let's drop this down to so level four and kind of go along my edges here and use dynamics to kind of pump up the jam in here. Give me, because some of the turtle detail stuff you'll see it uh, does have a little bit on it i guess we'll turn on wrap mode at one for this one right oops oh is that gonna yeah cloth is gonna do some nasty stuff so i'm gonna try to stay kind of maybe towards the center here or maybe not i'm just gonna kind of fudge that in there so a little bit of this and then uh, oh gosh what else standard red you know maybe turn off simulation iterations uh, for my pinch brush wrap mode up to one and then again yeah pinch really wants to do some crazy stuff maybe I didn't use pinch and I'm trying to even remember what even I did X um, I'm not sorry orbs cracks if you want to kind of cut in some some bigger cracks along here maybe I don't know have fun with it there's my turtle skin uh, but you don't if it's gonna repeating texture you don't want to have any major anything that's really going to pop out to you. So maybe something like this. Uh, again, if you want to capture just the tiling parts, um, I want to say we can use this to frame as well. So here's the Y frame. So we're going to say we'll turn this one on. We'll hit F and then we'll turn on our wrap mode. And then this has our, again, it's got a little bit of padding in there. So it hopefully grabs correctly. You know what? Let's go in here and we'll subdivide one more time. Smooth that. Oops. Turn on, I had smooth off. Divide was smooth on, get a nice smooth result. 
turn our floor off. And in here, if we go in here and we say, let's switch our, over to our normal map, um, it also, hopefully it doesn't crash, render best, I think will give you, uh, actually, let's turn off shadows, render properties, turn off shadows, and then, oh, yeah, you sculpt your normal map on. Um, and then render, I want to say render best can give you like, it kind of normalizes it, but honestly it doesn't see any change. So maybe that's not the case anymore. Uh, texture, grab doc, export. And this is if you want to use it as like a micro tiling in Marmoset. So I'm just going to throw this on my desktop as, um, here. Uh, and this isn't what, this isn't how I used it, but it's one way you could use it is we can go in here on the skin. So you have a detail normal map on there that just kind of tiles a high frequency detail. I'm just gonna go in here to my desktop. Here's our tiling test. We're gonna drop this way down. So here, we're just, here's our repeating tiling thing we just made. Uh, so if you wanted to use it as a detail map, you can go through here and again, like Marcin did in his presentation, just go through here and just crank this up so you get that like really fine repeating um, oops, detail tiling yeah um, let's put this up to like 80. there you go so it's just like a surface breakup um however that's not how i used it basically what i did we'll go back up here to draft quality and you may need to mask that out like for fingernails and stuff you don't want this tiling on it um, but so going back here i probably um Instead of doing that, we can just go alpha, grab doc. So here's our alpha map, and then we can go back here. Let's go in here to document, W size new, no, control M to clear our canvas. Go back to our mirrored guy. And then we can go out of solo mode, alt tap the skin. And then we're gonna go into our, cause we already have UVs on here. Uh, so we can go into, if you don't believe me, we can go in here to texture map, or if you just want to test, create. Um, oh, we don't have UVs on this guy. So let's get some UVs on this guy, I suppose. UV map, let's go into, and this is, if you watched the first video, I transferred the wrap, or the um, 1024 body geometry and UV, so I just kept those. But on this one, we can do it real quickly, I think. So we're going to go in here to... Plugin, and we're gonna go in here to UV Master, Symmetry, Polygroups, work on a clone. There we go, um, yeah, that'll work. So let's go in here to um, Unwrap, Flatten, Cool, Unflatten, Copy UVs, and we'll go back to our guy here and we'll paste our UVs. So now we got UVs, and if you wanna test that, we can go in here to create a uh, new from UV check, make sure we don't have any red on there, which would be overlapping UVs and you can see your UVs on here. So we're gonna turn that texture off and solo mode and startup material and poly paint off. So underneath surface, we have surface noise. Um, by default, if you crank up the surface noise, here, you're just gonna get a really rocky texture, which of course you can do some really cool stuff with. Uh, I'm gonna reset that and say, uh, we're just gonna go in here to alpha, click that alpha on and off. Um, oh, we didn't export, sorry. First thing you gotta do is alpha, select it, alpha, export onto our desktop. Um, turtle skin. There we go. We'll go ahead and turn that. Up. I mean, you can use this. You can literally go in here with like drag rect and you know do whatever you want with it. That's fine. Um, you can even turn on roll if you wanted to uh, with a dot stroke and then stroke. I want to say maybe roll. You know, just kind of roll this texture on if you want. Um, yeah, a lot of different ways to skin those cats. However, uh, what I did. Well, it's going to surface noise, and in fact, we may have to bump up the resolution on here quite a bit. Um, again, go in here to alpha, go in here to desktop. We have turtle skin, and then 
with that loaded up, uh, we can go through here. Again, we have strength, but it's going to be mostly that noise. Let's say mix basic noise down to zero, and then the noise scale, we can scale that up and down. Um, 3D UV noise plug. Oh, sorry, not noise scale, alpha scale. <laughs> go through here, and we can just scale this uh, up and down. Uh, make sure you have UVs turned on, so that's using your UV uh, seam lines. And you might have to do a little bit of cleanup, like right here where I have a cut. Uh, we can clean that up, or you can UV it in a way where your seams are just completely hidden. Um, but yeah, so now we have this. We have the scale dialed in. And I actually did three different scales. Essentially, we did large scales back here, kind of medium scales along the side, and then small scales as it kind of goes towards this front. Um, but yeah, so there's the scales on here. They're not applied yet. They're just surface noise. If you did want to apply them, you can apply them to your mesh. However, you're going to notice that this guy doesn't have a lot of geometry. The other guy does have like 40 million polygons, so that was pretty decent. Um, another thing you can do is instead of just applying this to the mesh, you can go in here and say layers, make a new layer, and down here underneath morph target, store a morph target. Um, so you can always go back to essentially no noise. Um, and you can just apply that to the mesh like we did earlier, or you could even mask by noise, and then you can inflate through if you want to you know, just dial in slowly. Or in fact, let's invert that so we can inflate through here. So we can inflate a couple times, and we can control tap to invert that, and we can deflate once maybe. And so now we've got all our scales on there. And then we have that all in a layer, so if we go out of recording mode, we can actually turn this all this on and off, or we can dial it down, dial it up. Um, we can even over crank it, you know, Ben Grimm style, and then uh, we can under crank it, maybe, on the other way if you like that better, um, or we can just leave it alone, so here and here. So we have this all in our layer. If we're cool with this, I'm gonna say bake all. Uh, if you wanted to go in a specific spot, you can say morph target, I'm gonna switch, and then BMG for the morph brush, and you can literally just go in and just dial in you know, where you want this to show up. Um, once you've done that, give it a bit about oh. Again, I'm just trying to remember where I kind of put it on them. Something like this. So we have this, we're cool with this. We can delete our morph target. We don't need that anymore. Standard brush off dot stroke stroke roll off. So, and if you're ever doing a bunch of stuff with your standard brush, remember you can just clone that off first and then uh, do do that to do all your weirdo stuff to a clone standard brush as opposed to the alternative. Another thing I end up doing uh, especially when I was doing the poly paint, uh, and I guess I can just show this on the one that actually has poly paint here. And again, we'll go in here to Skin Shader 4 so you can see a little bit better. Um, yes. So, for example, um, you know, I maybe want to mask the, the crevices and stuff a little bit better. So I would go in here to, uh, you know what, let's just so we can see a little bit better. We have a white color selected. I'm going to switch over to a flat color and I'm going to turn off this poly paint so flat color here and then uh, like I said turn off the poly paint oh we have a texture turned on sorry this is all baked to a texture map off there we go so then I can go in here to masking and goodness let me close some of this down uh, go in here to masking, and then we can say mask by cavity, and then you can change the cavity profile to pick up, you know, different areas. So that's basically in here. We want to kind of maybe drop this down, um, reduce or increase the blur a little bit so you can start masking by cavity. And you can also have this mask adjust. So when you apply this, it'll kind of run a, this kind of runs a levels on it. I'm going to turn blur off, and uh, you can reset this. So you can play with both mask by cavity and this mask adjust profile to kind of dial in that exact mask that you want. Again, this is doing it over 30 million polygons. So, you know, so if I want to just grab the edges of these and have them masked, I can do that. And then I can go back up here. And this is just so you can see it. I'll turn my poly paint back on 
and um, we can turn our skin shader if you want skin shading or if you don't you can keep it on flat color and then again you know b p a uh, we can hit c to sample any color on here and then we can like yeah, let's bump it up make it a little more yellow and then on the edges here we can go through and uh, take that rgb intensity down maybe throw in a alpha turn off lazy radius by tapping l go through here and you know paint up your edges a little bit control drag to unmask or if you want to paint while you're not looking at the mask go in here turn off view mask so now you can paint without your mask sitting there and again if you want to have your skin shader on or whatever you can do that then you can control tap to invert that mask again turn off view mask you can say maybe a darker blue green and then now it's going to mask out everything you didn't have and you can make changes like so for poly painting and masking and tiling textures all that good stuff um cool thanks john Yu, for stopping by him uh let me see if i missed anything here um how much do you feel you've improved as an artist yourself since you started teaching um improved as an artist probably not a whole lot improved as retention on technique of quite a bit so that helps um but to improve for me to improve as an artist to improve as a technician yes um but if i was teaching design you know that's probably what i should do i should force myself to teach stuff that i want to get better at um because yeah i don't necessarily know that i'm a better artist because i teach because i don't teach how to be a better artist really i teach technique unfortunately which is okay i don't you know technique is you know learning how to use your tools well is good but also learning how to be a good artist is also really good probably way more important than technique <laughs> cool um how to move multiple tools at once what if we wanted to move his arm and all the accessories to a new pose parenting teeth eyes with the head uh yeah that would just be if we go back to our guy here that's what we call transpose master so for instance if i want to move all his head and his eyes and his teeth z plug in transpose master t pose mesh do, 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 do. this is where subdivision history comes in handy if you don't have subdivision history you're going to try and pose you can put drop z sphere skeletons in here if you want but for example control drag mask lasso control tap to blur that out a little bit we'll go ahead and set this gizmo where his where his head is or you can use transpose and hey now he's looking up great t pose mess to subpose t do, 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 do. and of course there's a bunch of different ways to do this but um this is one of them everything follows there we go look at that Uh, yeah, and the pizza boxes they're talking about is this thing right here so you can slay say move multiple um, and in fact in zbrush summit uh, this year's zbrush summit there's even more functionality to be able to have the gizmo um, i don't have that functionality but um, for now what you can do is you can hold down control shift and if you wanted to move his arm outside of transpose master what you could do is you could you know have his arm selected and we mask his arm and in fact let's drop down to so level one in fact we can just say all to make this go faster and the deformations to be a little bit the gradient on the mass to be a little bit better we're going to say uh sub tool sorry all low and then now we can go through here so i'm going to mask where the arm is i'm going to make sure that these are all unmasked on the wraps on his arm here and in fact we're going to turn off x symmetry because we're not going to do this symmetrical and then now I can invert that mask, hit W. We're going to go ahead and pose this arm where it needs to go. However, we'll set this along its axis. Again, if you want to hit Y to go into transpose and you can just literally just drag a bone along here and just put this in here, that's fine as well. And you can even hit Y again if you want to use the gizmo if you've done that. Um, so we have this. And now we want to bend the arm with the wraps. Go in here to the pizza boxes, control shift drag the hash everything grab his body and his arm and now these will both be rotated together it's a few extra steps than transpose master but um yeah doable um uh, gosh i keep going it's keep going down to the bottom here um howdy from sweden 
I'm a big fan of Sweden. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, do, 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 transpose master, yes. And then show the E, um, show us how the Z-Shear rigging works. Um, I mean, I need to, I need to kind of keep making stuff, but if you go in here, um, here we go. Z-Sphere rigging. We can just mask uh, where this would go. And then from the front here, Uh, I want to give you a sub, but I don't know how. Uh, man, you got to smash that like and subscribe and hit the bell. Um, I don't care. You don't need to sub. You know where I'm at. Um, cool. <laughs> That's where I have a problem with hotkeys. I bind Z on solo mode, and I can no longer use spotlight as Z. It's a very important part of it. I can't find the spotlight feature. Ah, oh, where is that? Spotlight. Uh, would that be under draw? I honestly have no idea. Um, what I would consider is um, changing your solo key. <laughs> Does it have to be Z? Can it be X or A? Um, I have no idea what the spotlight stuff is. It's in there somewhere, but. Uh, and, and honestly, like, those are kind of built in like it's Z and shift Z. So then, yeah, could you, ooh, that sounds like a nightmare. I uh, just picked up ZBrush once and was a nomad hooked. Cool, excellent. Thank you, Stolo. Uh, how to use panel loops to create hand wraps or something similar like it. Yes, I did that in yesterday or Tuesday's live stream. So one more time for you all, uh, look for the big blue genie right here. We talked about how to make the wraps. So check out that one. The cool thing is you can pause it, you can rewind it, you can go slower. Yeah, <laughs> you think you are the first person to say cowabunga. Um, I should have titled my live stream that before I started here. Let's go back here. And we talked about most, most of the stuff is pretty straightforward, man. It's not, it's, you'll notice that a lot of the creation techniques, you know, Oh, I want to do a, a knee thing. I'm going to duplicate this off, isolate him. I don't need all this geometry. So maybe subdivision level three, delete higher, delete lower, go here, control shift, control W, make it all in poly group. Where do I want my geometry? Well, I want it here and I want it, oops, let's turn off uh, brush radius, sorry. Uh, I want a cut here and I want a cut here and I'm going to isolate. I guess I'll go turn this down just a slight bit. There we go. That's where I want my cuts. Now I want it to be mirrored. Well, you got a deformation mirror, geometry modified topology mirror and weld. Isolate that. Delete hidden zero mesh half. Data size down to zero. Uh, keep groups. We can probably turn off. And then this is literally just the start. It's going to give me something nice and form to his body. Go through here. Q mesh poly group ball. Pull out a little bit of thickness. Let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry. There we go. Like so. And then, oh, I want to put, you know, straps on here. Well, these are pretty close to being straps already, so I can just say, you know, let's duplicate this off. Q mesh, um, oops, hover over an edge. Uh, poly group, poly loop, just tap Alt here, Control Shift, just grab these, delete hidden, Q mesh, poly group all, pull these out. Well, I don't want them here. Okay, so we'll Q mesh these back, and I don't want them here, maybe pull these back, and now I have straps sitting there. Um, and if I want to, I can go through here, let's crease tolerance up. Let's just do a quick polish by features just to kind of smooth those out a little bit. Um, I can manually go through here and move stuff around, maybe turn on my brush. And you can save a hotkey for um, auto masking topological, but I usually just have my brush settings open. I'll go through here and we'll just massage this a little bit. Use move Accu if you need to. Something like this. Um, for anything that's kind of weirdo, like, you know what, I need to put like a, and it, it all boils down to, let's turn on LSIM so we can scale on that local axis here. What's my major shape? Kind of like when you're making the boat. Well, it's a sphere. Well, it's not a sphere, but it's a tapered sphere. And then you slice the shape you want and then you're kind of done. Uh, kind of the same thing for this. And you don't have to use any like bend curve or anything. You can literally just go in here and be like, okay, that's the basic shape of my knee pad, right? And then we'll go through here and we'll say, okay, great. And in fact, I might just work on one side when I'm doing this type of stuff. So delete hidden. Control shift and we'll go to the top here. 
let's say we just want it to be one side or we can just mask or if you want to is dynamesh you know go through here and just dynamesh and figure out okay i want you know do a little sculpting i want this to go around here and i want this to kind of be tapered in a little bit maybe he's got little turtle shells on his knees okay i want the ridge line to be here okay great well i don't need this big old blob in the back that's not doing me any but i do want holes on here right so first start with the overall shape which in this case we'll just use mask pin i'm just going to grab this and again i'm moving fast obviously you want to take your time and make it the exact right shape you want i tend to even get uh go in here say edge loop mask border isolate this poly groups auto groups so i can just grab this one and this one so i'm not sitting there masking all day control w geometry modified topology delete hidden zero mesh uh half is probably a little too high so maybe um we'll just say target polygon count of four and we'll just zero mesh this and then we'll just keep hitting half so you'll start seeing a lot of the same stuff over and over again what's the main shape get it zero mesh it move on from there um, and if i want to you know put in those little ridges we'll say q mesh poly group all we need a little bit of thickness display properties flip it's way down here underneath display properties so i can flip my normals and then now uh, we can put a little border in here q mesh put a little border in here if i want to you know poke holes in here this you could use booleans kind of like we did for the and i did this at the end of uh last time's playlist too here at the very end it was basically putting uh, details on a curved surface and letting zero mesher handle all the heavy lifting so definitely check that out uh, this would have been very similar like before i went nuts with all the z modeler stuff you know i basically would do this flip crease poly group crease level 15 smooth subdiv of two all the m uh, cylinder 32 i'm gonna do let's hold down control we'll say split mass points and we'll say crease this so now if i go out of solo mode i just want to see this and this so and also you know what make this a little bit easier on me let's go in here to depth and these cylinders i'm putting on i want them to be embedded but i also want them to be the same size it's not embedded enough there we go and a little bit more okay you and you and you and you and you and you could even use these holes or these cylinders as geometry to create the other stuff later but i don't think i did but anyway you know this is all fine subdivided we can go through here we can make these subtractive just put those down below those are all subtractive now great uh dynamic subdivision make boolean mesh well we all know the boolean mesh is going to be kind of cruddy but you're just looking for the green delete hidden zero mesh half dot size down to zero and now you've got new geometry and then you can go through here and you know q mesh poly group all and then of course you want to flip and then of course you want to put in a little border here let's go ahead and make this a separate poly group here sorry there we go you and then you if you just want it on one side just switch this to poly group island and then uh, yay and then we'll say crease pg crease level two smooth subdiv of three oops and then whatever uh, on top of here i probably did something like you know a simple cylinder here say split mass points shifty to turn that off um let's see let's just do a group by normals inset inset poly group uh, just island is a little safer uh, so we'll put this in here we'll put another one in here we'll say um, q mesh poly group island and we'll pull this in and we'll say insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation we'll pull this out and then um, you know this whole back end we don't need it to go like that so we'll just control tap this and now we got the little nubbin in there and then uh, we'll say crease you know what let's do this control w I want both of these control w there we go uh crease pg crease level two smooth subdiv of three is probably fine yeah there we go this goes in here and then you could even just turn this into an insert mesh brush same deal just kind of look down the camera b create an insert mesh new and uh you could create an insert mesh brush out of this or probably what i ended up doing is just manually hand placing these 
control drag, move it over. Um, not the funnest thing in the world to do for sure, but it'll get the job done. Um, and honestly, now that I think about it, I don't even think I did the Boolean route. I think what I did was just zero mesh it and then just poke holes. I just zero meshed it way down and then select, 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 Q mesh, straight back. And that did that, but you know, easy enough. Um, how do I unbind it? It doesn't have to be Z, but it already has overwritten. I don't want to redo my hotkeys. Um, I think if you go, I could be wrong, but if you go into where your hotkeys are, Z startup hotkeys, I think it's just a text file. So if you've got something like move Accu, delete this out of here, file save, restart ZBrush. Maybe. Spotlight isn't texture. Let's see. Texture. Yeah, the spotlight loading it up is in here. Is like turn off. Okay, so Shift Z is on and off. Is Z in here? Which is so we have spotlight. Okay. Oops, add this, add this to spotlight. So on and off is here, yes. And then that's shift Z. What about Z? Yeah, toggling gizmo or toggling the widget mode on and off. You'd think it'd be in here too, right? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, rendered it in Marmoset. Uh, answering the Mutant Ninja Turtle question. Cool. Uh, getting caught up, getting caught up. Sorry if I missed something. I apologize. Oh, I got coffee. Thank you, Aaron. Cool. Yes. Improved workflow tips from Paris. Awesome. I love it. I need to get out there one day. Uh, which is the new feature? Is the recent events you think you'll use the most? Oh, let me open my notes. Um, geometry interpolate. I mean, obviously, Bevel Pro will be a big one. Knife circle and rectangle will be good. Um, and if you want to see more of these, it's on Pixelogic's videos. They got part one, part two, part three of all these. Um, Subtool versions, I'm looking forward to. Uh, the extra Dynamesh sampling, I'll probably use a little bit. Uh, aligning, and just, aligning and distributing geometry will be good. Dual action brushes seem interesting. I'm sure other people will be able to come up with really cool brushes for those. Surface noise in it is good update. I didn't use that a bunch, but maybe I'll use it more now. Uh, Gizmo has, uh, Scribe is pretty cool. They're all, the, the base, uh, Baw Relief is good. Um, image plane, that's, I got some files set up to use that. I don't, haven't gotten uh, the new ZBrush yet, so I can't use it. Uh, spotlight edge detection is kind of neat. I don't know how much I'll use that. Yeah, they're all, they're all good. A lot of the interpolate stuff, uh, geometry, you're able to interpolate geometry now instead of just, um, just strokes. So that's kind of neat. Uh, cool. Multiple versions. So you want to bring my to completion, but then do a Leo. Is there best practice for going back a few steps for a resculpt? Eat, save iterative saving is what I would do. I would have like you know like this guy here. This um. Let me see here. Shift Z. Uh, this one. No, this could be. This could be any any of them. And it just got the basic musculature. So if you wanted to like you know thin out. Donatello or whatever. I don't know what you'd want to do, but like, you know, just deflate him just a tad and then go in and do a couple of resculpts or you want to thicken up um, Raf. Go in here. Oops, not resolution. Inflate. And kind of thicken him up a little bit and then you've got all your all your details back. And then if you wanted to have different styles of turtle, I suppose, you could, you know, save out a cop save out a version before you applied all of this noise, or if you want them to all have the same noise and just do superficial, or sorry, big, the opposite of superficial, um, big uh, changes, then yeah, you do that. Um, uh, 
uh, nicely detailed in light with subdivisions. Um, wool, you could also, I mean, God, you could even save out your high resolution details of displacement map if you're not changing the UVs and then go into another sculpt and then reapply the displacement map on a layer and then use morph targets. Um, you put on a layer, bake it out if you get it dialed in and then use morph targets to brush your detail back in. You could do that too. Um, kind of depends on how much you're changing the base model. You can always get your detail back unless you change your base model quite a bit, and then you may have to go to the displacement route. But um, and it, that's also what subdivision hit levels are for. So if, again, if you want to make major changes, you still have all your details there, but you can make major changes to. Uh, let's say you wanted to square this guy's jaws up. Of course, we already moved his head, but you know. Make him frowny and real mad. You know, he still has all his detail there. Um, so it's even faster if I don't have to talk while I'm doing it. Um, but again, that, again, I do the same thing over and over again. Um, so once you do it 50 million times, you get pretty fast in it. And I don't really even model that much. Um, I wish I modeled more. Yeah, recycling stuff. How to use fill in Z modeler. Fill. There's a. Let's see, make poly mesh 3D. So if you're talking about the. So I do have a brush for just slicing. You know, see, edge is set to slice mesh, point is set to slice mesh, face is set to polygroup fill. So I can slice through here, and as I'm slicing through, you can see it's kind of leaving behind a, um, a creased edge, and then I can just polygroup fill, and that fill option says stop the creased edges. So you can tell it how and where to fill, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, gradient mask and a long selection of a high poly model, for example, on a forearm of the elbow to the hand. That's tricky, but doable, kind of. So if I'm, this is going to be kind of weird, but for example, we have high high resolution mesh. We got 4 million polygons, and I'm in here, and I got my lasso here, and it's super tight, right? And then you want to blur this out, so I'm going to go back into my standard brush and say control tap, and it's, oh, it's slowly blurring out, right? Well, if you do have subdivision history, drop it down. And then there you go. And if you want to blur it out, control tap, blur the hell out of it if you want to. And then if you go back up, you know, now it's perfectly, there's a nice, nice gradient to it, right? Well, let's say you don't have subdivision history or, you know, you're working on a super high resolution Dynamesh. If you're working on a super high resolution Dynamesh, I would consider control tapping that point in space, zero meshing down, projecting that detail back onto a subdivided mesh so you can do exactly what I just showed. But if you refuse, uh, you can also just back this way out and then grab his elbow and then there you go nice gradient transition horrible <laughs> <laughs> stepping with lazy mouse chisel down standard brush i tried this one i it's creasing panel lines but sometimes i'd like to explain that more um lazy mouse chisel so let's say brush chisel here, and then we go through. So it's kind of, it's, some of that is resolution dependent. These are also really super heavy duty brushes here. So I only got 16 million, that's fine. So we'll go through here and um, gosh, it almost seems like that alpha is just a little, oh, that's another thing too that's been updated. Um, there is some slight stepping in here. If you do see stepping sometimes under stroke, you can take this lazy step down. So I'll say 0.01, and that'll kind of sometimes smooth the stroke out. Um, but gosh, this also seems like an alpha problem, which is a very, it's a very harsh, for some reason, these chisel brushes are like kind of harsh to the max. Um, maybe Damien standard here with lazy mouse. Yeah, so I turn lazy mouse off, I'll get really bad stepping. Um, generally speaking, lazy mouse should improve that. However, if it doesn't, it's that lazy step. So if that's cranked up, 
obviously it's going to literally step that out. So that's when you just go through here and you hopefully you can turn that lazy step down. You can also sometimes if you want it to be a continuous stroke, like for example, a lot of people do this on their clay buildup. Um, you know, if they don't like that stepping, literally just going in here and saying roll distance of five, let's say, we'll smooth that out as well. Cool. Mm. Thank you, C. Friedelich, uh, for posting that. Yes. Way to make GoZ faster um, or are more sub tools, the speed is also decreasing. Oh man, I rarely use uh, GoZ. I should probably, I don't know. I don't, I don't jump out of ZBrush that much anymore. And uh, yeah, I don't use GoZ that much. I'm sorry, I wish I had a better answer for you. But, okay, so, solo mode, what else we got? We already talked about the wraps, we already talked about the shell, we already talked about this and that and the other thing. The mask is the exact same thing, literally. Let's see if we can go back to the beginning. Yeah, we can. Uh, same thing for this. Oops. This one. There we go. And this one. Boop. Everything's back. Um, is it might not surprise you at all. And in fact, in the video it shows, I slice, slice, zero mesh, clean it up a little bit, probably zero mesh again, uh, pinch brush with a little bit of the elasticity turned on, call it a day. I think we've made, basically modeled this whole thing. Like, let's see. Yeah, I think we're good on this guy. Delete all. Uh, back here underneath our, oh, now we're doing this. Delete all. Back here underneath our, God, we've done so much stuff. Goodness. There we go. And poly paint off. Um, yeah, so the skateboard, uh, you can see me again on the Stylus League. I linked at the very beginning of this, and I'll put it in the description as well. Uh, skateboard is pretty straightforward, and that's just, um, you don't even, let me just open up some images here. I'm not a, I'm not a skater. Uh, recording. Nope, we're streaming. Turtle Power, Michelangelo. Um, marketing, nope. Props, skateboard, there we go. So I got a bunch of skateboard reference in here. And you know, you can load them up into Spotlight. So if you want, you can say uh, texture. Oh, here's another thing I love doing. Um, it's my new favorite thing. So underneath Z, I do have a uh, Z plugin ref switcher so there's a ref switcher you can go just google zbrush ref switcher ref switcher and you can check that out um so i have a squid games one a pizza hut one oh pizza we haven't talked about that we'll do skateboard real quick um, i can add another one we'll call it skateboard and then uh, for this we'll just say you know what i'm going to start with a cube edit make poly mesh 3d and um so now i can load reference in here. So we can go in here to texture, import, and I'm just going to grab, uh, what do we want? We want a top view that we can rotate and then a side view. And that's probably good enough for now. So we'll say open. So we're gonna go in here to texture. We're gonna select the top one. We're gonna add the spotlight. We're going to scale it down just a bit. We're gonna rotate it around just a bit like so. And this will be our Sorry, rotate, there we go. And we'll drop the opacity down a little bit. And you can also set, if you want it, if you want a specific focal lengths, like you had perspective turned on and you want to go in here to draw and set it to like 85 if you're matching a portrait or something, it'll even save this. So that's totally neat. So anyway, uh, we'll turn off all this stuff. So we have our thing in here. We're gonna say save view. And I can sign these to Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3, et cetera. Uh, so now we'll do our second one. So texture, grab this one, add it to spotlight. Um, we don't need this one anymore, so we can just delete it out over there. We can say scale this down. And you know what? Maybe for this one, we want it to be rotated this way. Cool. So this will be our second one. We're going to say save this view. So now I can do Alt-1 and Alt-2, and I can switch between these with my spotlight and use those as reference. However, if you don't feel like using Spotlight, you can also literally just open up 
Uh, let's find that side view here. For example, the side view. Just open it up in an image editing program. This was um, XN view, I believe. We can rotate this here. We can literally just have it, whoa. Just have it behind. Just kind of hanging out here. Multiple ways to do this in ZBrush, by the way, but this is just a couple. And then you can literally just crank the see-through down. So as you're modeling, we can turn off the modeler. So as you're modeling, you can just have your references kind of sitting there. So what I probably ended up doing was going through here and uh, I want predictable geometry and I also want to make sure, let's turn off see-through because I already have spotlight. So Alt-1, Alt-2, see-through, off. Um, oh, Shift-Z. So uh, we got our board here. I want to make sure that we're symmetrical across the right axis here. So that's Z forward. I want the skateboard to kind of be this way. And then uh, Z4, so this is the front of the board, X here. So this is this is what I'm going to start at. Again, I want nice even geometry. So zero measure half to have size down to zero, detect edges, X symmetry turned on. We're good to go. In fact, we maybe subdivide this a couple of times, go down here, delete lower. And just like when our, in our bison, we can go through here and I'm going to say control shift, knife curve. Uh, we want it to kind of, and again, you could box model this and pull things out and move verts around. Um, but I probably, knowing myself, I probably let zero mesher do the heavy lifting. And I also was able to get a little bit more nuance into, you know, it kind of gets like this direction. Um, I want maybe knife this way here. Uh, and so we turn off the polyframe here. I probably want to even maybe make that, you know, that, that, that apex here, the middle. So I'm going to mirror and weld across the Z axis here. So there's my skateboard here. And then on the top, we'll go again, Alt-1. There we go. And then again, there's Z forward. So the front goes to the back. We need this to be widened out just a bit. And then again, um, we just need to do really, the knife, the knife will do both sides, but you know, again, we need that little bit of that board nuance there. Um, so something like this. And this is, you know, if you need to go in here to Z and rotate this around, looks like I needed to just a little bit more here. There you go. And if you ever change this and you need to save it, just say save view one, that'll overwrite it. So you don't really lose anything. So again, um, Q, control shift here, and we'll just kind of give ourselves that little board cut here. And then this, this is actually gonna be a corner, so we're good. Uh, so something like this. So we have the shape that we want. We have the the curvature we want from both sides, control shift, delete hidden, we have X symmetry turned on, half, half size down to zero. We don't need detect edges turned on. And this is probably uh, solo mode floor. Okay, floor on. Did I do it upside down? Because I'm a goober. Um, no, and in fact, let's do the same. It's, it's dropping it too low. There we go, perfect. So we have this, and then I guess we'll go to the bottom here. We can make some minor adjustments. You know, it's looking good here. And then Q mesh, polygroup, all or polygroup island, flip. And then, then we have our board. Again, we can do Alt 2, make sure that, you know, we're the right thickness. And we're off to the races. The grip tape would just be, again, you can control drag off from a Q mesh to do this, but I like to have it just flush on the board. So delete hidden. You can use dynamic thickness like we did earlier, but you can also just go in here and that can be that. And you can go in here and like crease, dynamic, crease level two, smooth side to the three, and start dialing this in. Same thing with this crease, crease level two, smooth side to the three. And if we want to pull this board edge out just a little bit, we can. Q mesh probably go by and just boop, pull this out. And then this is a case where what I would call like hero wear. So if you're going to be going through here and being like, cause this would actually be zero meshed like this cause it, it was completely destroyed, right? So I wouldn't try to do that in the texture. Uh, but same thing for this, this type of wear where I was going through here and um, X symmetry. 
Uh, oops, let's go ahead and apply that. Going through here and just, uh, oops, hold on, alt. Like this type of wear I was doing on the grip tape, um, this I would definitely sculpt in. Or, uh, oops, let's turn off X symmetry here. I have wrap mode still turned on. Doop, doop, nah, brush. Wrap mode off. And in fact, I wonder if we could do this. Let's try this. Z plugin. Um, Z repeat it. I'm going to record wrap mode. It's not going to do it for all my brushes. You could record a wrap mode going to zero and then, but it's again, it's not a sub tool, so or it's not, it's a brush, so that's not going to help that much. Anyway, if you wanted to do a, a bunch of or some action scripty things to all your sub tools or all your visible sub tools or your selected sub tools, um, you could use zero repeat it. In this case, it wouldn't work that well, but anyway, uh, wrap mode down to zero and then X symmetry turn back on, and then yeah, stuff like the, the bolts in here, I yeah, put those in there like this. Um, and reference is also key when it comes to things like this. You know, you want to go through here and get a shape from the side and the front and the back. So all of these had a ton of this type of reference. So that's, that's more of like beat up reference, but like this, you know, go through here, same deal, go through and sculpt. And you can see me on Stylus League actually making this, going through and sculpting the shape and then rebuilding it with these spheres, increasing it. Um, in fact, it's also in the, again, it's all here. So if we play this here, uh, oops, wrong, wrong, right here. Hey, our knee pad we just did. Hey, our nunchucks we just did. Hey, our straps we did it last time. Hey, wrapping we did last time. Hey, skin we just did. Uh, there we go. So I'm making this geek. Uh, so yeah, again, I've sliced out the shape and the size of the thing, and then I went through and just dynameshed, um, trim dynamic, H polis, get the get the basic overall shape, rebuild it with Z spheres, crease where I wanted the creases to go. So it's a really weird, complex shape. I didn't want to try to figure that out with box modeling, so I sculpted it first, rebuild it if you want to, and then the wheels are super easy. Those are literally just... Um, Start with the cylinder, edit, make poly mesh 3D. Uh, let's go in here to the floor. And you know what? Let's say, yeah, Z forward's fine. So here's our cylinder. And in fact, I probably, knowing myself, I probably went in here with just a simple cylinder and just grabbed my own um, as opposed to starting with this one. But this one's fine. We'll go in here and we'll make this so you can see it. And we'll say, uh, if you'd ever just start with something and you wanted to simplify it, uh, going in here and saying delete loops is an easy way to do that. So we'll go through here and you know use your reference to scale. I uh, will go through there. We'll put a big old fat bevel on here. You can also, if you wanted to, like insert single edge loop, you could put one here and then one here, and then hold down Alt and delete this one if you want to. But in this instance, I'm pretty sure what I did was just bevel, oops, yeah, bevel, bevel, insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation pull out to round tap to set that uh, inset polygroup island legacy probably here and then this is where you know maybe inset twice and then q mesh hold down shift to push this in uh, bi brush insert um, industrial parts maybe i think they got one i thought they had a nut bolt assembly um, Oh, you know what? I bet it's in their model toolkit. But let's say you didn't know that. You're in here and you're like, oh, I wish they had in here um, a bolt head with a washer. Well, you already have a washer. It's that green thing right there. So in fact, we can just take this bolt head, put it in here. We'll say split mass points. We can move this out a little bit or something. We'll take this one. We'll duplicate it off. Go into solo mode. Control shift tap. Delete hidden. Q mesh. Polygroup island or polygroup all. And then, yeah, crease PG, crease level of two, smooth so div of three. And then there's your washer. So you can just steal that, this dynamic. Again, crease level two, smooth so div of three is fine. This one, 
I don't think we want, you can try it. You can say D for dynamic. And if that's the fall off you want, you can, or you could even go like, you know what, let's isolate these and we'll just crease that open edge and then crease level of one, smooth of div of three, and maybe that's the fall off you want. But more, more than likely in this instance, for something more organic-y, I'm probably just gonna go, he'll say increase all. I'm just gonna manually put in, again, a bevel along here and then say whatever that width needs to be and on the back too and then insert single edge loop uh, no multiple edge loops interactive elevation round this out a little bit and if i forget i'm like oh, i should have done the other side no problem we're working right down the middle so in this case if you do a mirror and weld across the x and it does the wrong side deformation mirror geometry modified topology mirror and weld and you got both sides um, you can even take this whole apparatus here and you can merge it all down say B, create insert mesh new, save this as skateboard wheel, and then you got skateboard wheels for days. Just go through here and hold down control and make them all the same size. And you got your skateboard wheel. I recommend a starting point for terms trying to learn the program. Uh, if you're talking about ZBrush, I would probably start, there's an ugly dude. I shouldn't say that. He's fine looking. Um, he's uh, right here. So this is 10 and a half hours of just intro to ZBrush stuff. So this is a good enough place to start as any. And then also on my YouTube channel, same deal. Just look for him. Um, yeah. Um. Okay, sorry, I got to went back way up. Um, I got, and again, if I missed anything, I apologize. There's a bunch of stuff on here. Do you use the lowest subdivide? Apply high detail bake maps to your character mesh when you want to render a final image? Generally speaking, yes. If you, In fact, if you want to follow along of me doing that, there is some stuff in here for that. There's the um, sci-fi weapon process. Uh, there's the speed modeling and texturing where I do just that. Just quick models, decimate it down, throw it in the painter, whoosh, texture it up. Um, how do you cross over brush strokes that they have clean cuts? When I cross over strokes, it always has horrible geo at the crossover. Yes, that's, um, so for instance, we have this, oops. Oh, and here's another thing too. If I have knife and I'm like, oh, I just want to switch temporarily to um, visibility, just tap control. And control shift A, uh, split hidden. And then we've got this, we'll go ahead and hit apply. We'll hit control D a couple times and then we'll go back to our chisel brushes here. So we got a chisel brush and we're sculpting with this awesome chisel brush. But you're right, you can cross over in one stroke and it'll be fine, but if you pick up, it'll do the little double deformation. There we go, a little bit higher. Like this, and then like this, oops. Uh, that's where morph targets come in. Same thing with a layer brush. If you go in here to morph target, store a morph target, and then you can go across, and then you can go across, and it'll give you that nice, that nice. Um, if you want more information on anything that comes out of my mouth, generally speaking, you can go in here and say, Oop. Thank you, YouTube. Chisel brush. Continuous stroke. Chisel brush. Now I get you more information. Uh, save curves in ZBrush so I can replace old insert meshes with new one. I uh, You can use, like we did earlier, you can use Z-Sphere chains, and then you can create Z-Sphere curves, and then you can just keep your Z-Sphere chains hanging out. Or, uh, again, like when we were making the nunchucks, is that how you pronounce that? Um, you know, if you have, let's see, we did, did we do it on this one? Did I keep it around? No, we did it on, yes. Okay, perfect. Let's turn, every, oh wait, that's the posed one. So I got a lot of crap in here. Um, five, two, 68. No. Um, I am just looking for, <laughs> that's a rep plane, that's our boat. Uh, oh, I don't have a mini here anymore. If you remember, everybody watching, um, oh, I guess we got it hanging out here, that's kind of neat. So we have, we had our Z-sphere, and then we had our skin Z-sphere, and then we pulled off those, those curves. You can use the Z-spheres with curve helper down here to recreate those curves really easily. Or if you have the geometry hanging out, I'll just redo it again real quick. So 
if you just want to keep the geometry in your scene that's controlling the curve, like so, delete hidden, and then control W, and then um, polygroup, polyloop, U, and U, and U, and U, delete hidden, uh, polish by features. So we've got this sitting out in our scene, and then we want to like, like we did earlier, uh, Z to stroke, um, frame our mesh, B, I, brush, insert, M, U, here. It's like, okay, great, I have this. I'm going to uh, go in here and delete my curve. I'm gonna say uh, hide point, which is visibility hide point, and then split hidden. And I'm just gonna turn um, this off. And now I've got my scene and I'm all happy. And then I decide, oh, you know what? I wanna make a change. You can always go back to this and you can change this however you want. Or if you still have your Z-spheres, you can change those Z-spheres however you want and use Curves Helper. Um, but as far as saving curves, no, I don't, not that I know of. Unless you literally don't delete the curves, save your Z-tool, they'll hang out between save sessions. But I don't know, that's kind of scary. I like having something tangible in there for the curve. Yeah, spotlight's awesome. Uh, okay, so what do you, you tell you about using smooth brush while sculpting as an option is ruining the volume better to clarify with clay brush, for example, instead of smooth brush. Um, using smooth brush while sculpting, there's an opinion it is ruining the volume. Oh, yeah, so for instance, there's two modes to smoothing. We'll go back to our big one here. So for example, this, I'm gonna to go to his arm here, and I'm gonna drop down to subdivision level four maybe. There we go. So I'm gonna use a smooth brush here, and I start smoothing, uh, wait, unmask. There we go. And I start smoothing. Um, you're gonna, I'm trying to see if there's a better example of, let's go into solo mode, of like volumes we wanna maintain, maybe down here on the hand. So on this hand here, and I start smoothing, his whole thumb is gonna shrink right? Because it's literally just averaging those verts. However, if you hold down shift and let go of shift and start smoothing, it'll maintain those volumes much better. So here's maintained volumes. Here is just smooth the hell out of it. The exact same thing with, um, to go through here and grab this. If we do, it's the difference between deformation, polished by features, closed circle will maintain your volumes. Polished by features, open circle will destroy your volumes. It'll smooth the hell out of it, don't get me wrong, uh, but it'll also destroy your volumes. Also these little, if you have like little weird um, stars in your geometry, if you hold down shift to smooth, you're gonna see it's gonna kind of leave them behind. If you hold down shift and let go of shift, it'll actually average those a little bit better. It'll maintain your volumes and it'll spread that geo over that volume a little bit nicer. So if you have little pinpoints, um, holding down sh again, holding down shift, letting go of shift will maintain your volumes. Or if you want to use that as your default, it's under your brushes here. BS brush smooth alt. So you can set this, and then now when you use this smooth brush, it just maintains your volumes all the time. And then if you want to do the alt, you know, do the regular volume destroying shift, let go of alt, or let go of shift. Sorry. And it might switch back, although in this case, I think it just stays alt, but anyway. Oh, and I also, when I hold down shift, I have a curve, curve, brush, uh, brush, 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 smooth, uh, smooth, brush modifiers. Um, Weighted smooth mode, set the one when I sh when I shift to smooth. It is, it's a smooth stronger. This is a smooth stronger maintaining my volumes. And then I can also drop that Z intensity down if I need to, so. Um, store history, yeah. Uh, I don't know that it does anything with curves. I think it's literally just vert points, but you can try. Uh, cool, thank you. C. Fridlick. Um Let's see, Gene Ross, Z Super Curve Watch. Intro to Zebra Slice on ArtStation. I found a YouTube channel and also Zebra. Oh, that's another good. Thank you for bringing that up. On ArtStation, there is, if you look for the basketball goober, he is. Here's the full 
there's 16 hours on art station so if you have art station learning there you go you can get up and run into the brush uh, watching youtube videos instead of the art station ones there it's probably a wash they're especially well the the one on the youtube isn't going to go in as in depth as this one this one probably goes into a lot more this one's 16 hours the one on youtube's only 10 hours um but honestly like if eh, for intro stuff you're probably good oh thank you i can't oh no i can't pronounce that lee gibbons thank you imperial walker thank you uh and then again i can't i'm sorry i can't pronounce this but thank you you guys are awesome really appreciate it um i'm not even sure where that happens but i uh i appreciate it it helps get me up in the morning man <laughs> you guys are awesome um what can you what can you tell about using smooth virtual sculpting oh yeah so we got over that um cool yes and illust yeah uh there's actually a zbrush for illustration um and there's some streamers uh tony uh does this a lot so zbrush for tours uh, there's a lot of cool uh, 3d concept artist has some of that tony leonard does a lot of streaming you know zbrush for illustration and just like i did earlier when we were messing around i mean you can do um you know stylistic renders to get ink drawings and stuff but i mean really again just going in here and you know messing around uh, you know what what probably would have been funner is do i still have that in here you know what i'm gonna do you shut it down it's getting too heavy we're gonna have a little bit more fun with this i think um oh that might how did you did a video on a rope and a christmas tree earlier i was trying to see that video can you help with that linker title i think that was drust i am honored that you think i'm joseph drust but i think uh it was drust rope christmas z brush um, and it was using a lot of the same techniques uh, I know what you're talking about though. I do vaguely remember that, but basically it was, it's kind of, I think it's an older video. So curves helper is now built into stroke is the only thing you'll need to know. But I think you literally use Z sphere curves helper, uh, or maybe it was when curves helper was new. And then uh, if you want to make a rope, I mean, I've, I've done that before. That's gotta be in here, right? No, somewhere in here. I mean, I'll just show you how to make a rope real quick. It's pretty simple. So, or at least, one way to make a type of rope. So um, if I go in here, you know, I'll say that's plain 3D, a lot of different ways to make a plain 3D. One of them is make polymesh 3D geometry, just reconstruct back down to a solid plane, delete higher. This is already, if I hit unify, it's already the size I want because what I'm gonna do is go in here to our geometry, dynamic, turn smooth down, go into micro poly. There's already some repeating ropes in here. You see wires and stuff like that, weaves, uh, I think. What I'm looking for is probably just a wire. So I only need one. So I'm gonna hold down control shift, isolate this. Oops. Micro poly um, on apply. I only need one, so control shift A, delete hidden. So if I use this and tile it, it's basically gonna go, oops, let's back out a little bit. So it's gonna go like this if I turn this into an IMM brush just to test it out. Looks good. So if I do this, B. That's all, let's hit Control W, make it all one polygroup. B, create insert mesh, new, uh, stroke, curve mode on. And now if we start just using it, it's probably gonna be broken in between. Let's make it so you can see it. Um, see how it's not welded? Well, you gotta go down here to brush, modifiers, uh, weld points. You can turn triparts off, even though it's not going to affect anything on this one in particular. In this case, too, you may even, because it's like for pipes, you can maybe even turn up curve res. You can see how you got a nicer bend in here. So turn up your curve res. Curve res max bend angle will allow you to get it pretty tight. If you want to get it 100%, just go in here to max bend angle of 90. You can really curl these up or bend angle of zero, and it'll it'll make it so that it wants to. Yeehaw! So there's a. There's a quick root brush. Uh, and then again, if you want to use Z-spheres uh, to put it in specific places, and then you want to go through and use curve Z-sphere curves helper, you can do that. We went over that earlier. Yes. <laughs> again, thank you, Lee, Imperial Walker. 
and the name I can't pronounce because I can't read this these letters. I'm sorry, I'm a dumb American. Um, did you you did a video on a rope? Yes. Um, skateboard wheels, skateboard wheels. <laughs> yep, Inception skateboard wheels. Um, cool. Have you ever done a d tutorial for dreadlocks? Yeah, probably similar. Um, although I might end up doing that kind of stuff in um, X Gen if I was uh, in like braids and stuff too. Um, please help with exporting our braids cur to curves to X Gen. Exporting correct normal and displacement map for rendering in V Ray in Maya. I'm stuck with my model. I have never done displacement in V Ray. I, there's probably better, smarter people than me when it comes to like creating displacement maps. There's got to be. Because um, I'm really dumb when it comes to that. Creating your displacement map and then sub -pixel, pixel accuracy. There's something about displacement, 32 bit, about like the mid level of displacement maps between renderers that can kind of be different. Like some start at mid gray, some start at black or white or I don't know, everything in between. Um, and the correct normal, normals are pretty simple. It's either going to be OpenGL or DirectX. If it looks wrong, flip the Y channel or the green channel, and then it'll look correct. Um, is there a way not to get the flat plane residue after merging and welding a Dynamesh and Booleaning it? Flat plane, oh, um, merge and welding a Dynamesh and Booleaning it. The only, what can happen, and this is I think what you're talking about, so if you have a Z-sphere here and you want to avoid, so if I go in here to a clip, so if I go in here using the knife curve, this is awesome. So I can um, knife this off, oops, make polymesh 3D. I can knife this off and it does a slice and a close hole and it does an amazing job. However, if you do clip, what you're gonna see, and you know, again, knife curve, if I go through and do this and then dynamesh it, um, no problem, right? If I go through here and I do clip, it's going to push that geometry, and sometimes this is more desirable, but it's going to push that geometry straight up and leave you with a little ring. And then if you go through here and you Dynamesh, you're going to get that flat plane residue. Uh, the only way to avoid that is to not have any flat areas on the mesh. If you're bringing in a mesh and you're combining it and you're Dynameshing it, if you have any flat planes in your geometry, it's just going to do that. Um, you can kind of clean it up. You hold down Shift and go into Sculptures Pro. You can kind of... You can kind of clean that up, or if you're able to, do something like this, where you can just clip curve circle and just clip it back and then re mesh and clean it up. But yeah, avoiding thin areas on your mesh that the Dynamesh can't resolve because the resolution is high enough is the only real way, I think. Uh, any tips on making things more smooth and less lumpy uh, resolution? So if you're going on here, and you're like, okay, let's turn on X symmetry, mirror and weld across the X. And you know what? Since this is in the middle, let's go in here to transform. And let's go in here to symmetry and the Y radial count up to 100. Trim dynamic. We can smooth and then trim like so and smooth and then standard brush or whatever. And then Dynamesh. So if you want it to be smooth, you can go in here, Dynamesh resolution way up. And then you can go through and you can cut better lines, right? Um, however, you're going to run into, um, and this is totally fine. This is a fine way to create something fast and easy. Um, but you may find out that, like, you know what? This probably would have maybe would have been better with the Z model. Um, so we can go through here, make poly mesh 3D, um, control shift, let's make it so you can see it. So instead of relying on just sculpting, just think of different ways to attack the problem depending on what the end result's going to be. So we can go through here, we can say close, convex hole, and then control shift W, and then through here we'll say, you know what, I want to do like a poly group, poly loop, U, U, and U, and then maybe do like an inset, poly group all legacy, push this in, and then Q mesh, uh, sorry, Q mesh poly group all, hold down shift and pull this in and then crease PG, crease level sub loop, crease level one, smooth subdiv of three maybe, and then nice and smooth. Um, so just a different way to attack the problem, just as fast, even more control, honestly, less destructive, uh, but the same result. However, you may be uh, modeling something very high res 
like uh, we'll go you know what you were gonna do this anyways let's see zuber's legacy oh uh, what is it uh no it says not zebrush demo i need to get rid of this one uh remove from unpin from quick access zebrush demo legacy 2021 uh, bird robot steps so for if you're working on just concepting something out and you want it nice and smooth like this here uh, but it's getting lumpy uh, for instance so try, you know what these aren't lumpy enough there we go nice and lumpy uh, okay you control shift a split hidden uh, and we're going through and we want to like H polish this and we have it all dynameshed like so. Um, and we want to, you know what, I just want to mess with this. Control shift, select lasso, yoink, let's delete hidden, close holes, W control tap, kind of give ourselves a little bit of breathing room in here. You could use back face masking on that as well. If you get this nasty thing again, hold down shift, Sculptures Pro, clean those up. A little bit redynamesh to close your holes. So we have this here, and then we want to go through and like clip curve and you know clean up any shapes or get them a little bit more refined. Like so, or you could use knife curve now. Um, bad habits. So or old habits, I should say. And then you're going through here and you're using like H polish and stuff. Now, for one thing, for lumpy meshes, H polish with a big brush is going to be your friend because if you do H polish with a tiny brush you know you're going to get a bunch of lumps and then uh, also we're dynameshing probably at a higher resolution than this but at a certain point you're going to get to a to an area where it might be beneficial to go through and even on organic stuff even if this wasn't hard surface and it was like you know what it's a creature and we want to go through here and you know we've got some wrinkles and we're cutting in and we got some surface flow and we're going in with our clay brush you could find out that like ah it gets really difficult the higher the resolution you go it's getting really difficult to smooth any areas out or do any real um, precision kind of sculpting on this and again we'll go back in here with keep raising that resolution up to get more and more and more out of it and eventually it's just going to be hard to work with um, there we go and again skin flow and all that good stuff and standard brush and veins and all that stuff um it's just hard to work with well at this point this is why i said again control tap to store those points in history zero mesher uh depth size down quite a bit on organic stuff i don't necessarily need to go down to zero uh target polling account of five is fine you can also use the giz the widget gear icon to zero mesh to a specific amount uh, we're just going to zero mesh this really quickly here and if that's low enough you can even tr push your lug zero mesh half and i'm going to go over here to project history that's under subtool project so you have a nice low res control d to subdivide project history control d to subdivide project history control d to subdivide project history and now you have nice even quad predictable geometry and if you need to go through and like unlump something you now have subdivision history you know, so I can drop this down, and it's a lot easier to work with now. Go through here and do nice, smooth transitions between areas, and it doesn't get lumpy because I'm using, I'm working with less geometry. And then when I want to go detail this up, it's easier to work with. And again, much more predictable. Uh, I have more control over it. I can go back in again with my clay brush. And if it starts getting lumpy, just, and again, if I'm doing secondary work now, and I'm like, ah, it's too lumpy drop down one and now you have less polygons to work on less polygons to have to control and you'll get much smoother results so you're going to go through here and again just kind of unlumpy yourself clay brush boop, 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 boop. build up build up build up in between and then and then when i'm ready not to and you know smooth a little bit and then here is where the geometry gets a little bit harder to control, but your forms are probably dialed in even better. So now you can go through here and just continue to, you know, detail up. Standard brush, put some little veins. Weird meat cube. 
Thank you, Charles Barber. Um, having a hard time finding a way to create believable dreadlocks in ZBrush. How would you go about it? Well, first I would figure out. I wouldn't honestly do them in ZBrush is probably the biggest problem. Um, <laughs> like, I can show you how to do the shape, but this is just, this is noise with fiber mesh on it. And the fiber mesh is probably going down the strand. So, um, yeah, I wish I had a better answer, but it'd be like BX, oh, sorry, BE, extrude profile, M. Just grab a shape, a circle's probably as good a shape as any. Go through here and, oops, let's delete lower here. So, and we want to uh, change that profile curve, which is underneath our stroke, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Stroke, curve, fall off. So probably something more like this. Here, this, here. You can even hold down control and go through here and move the stuff around. Um, so there's the volumes. Control shift, grab all these. Go ahead and say split hidden. Um, control D to subdivide. And uh, oops, let's do uncrease all. Delete hidden, uncrease all. Control D to subdivide. And again, in ZBrush, uh, <laughs> surface noise, maybe. You know, it's, it's a rough texture. So it'd be something like this, scale it up. You know, it's kind of like this, but then it also has hair on it, which in ZBrush, um, you can make hair curves. You can also just throw on some, what would it be? Uh, fiber mesh, sorry. Fiber mesh here, preview, um, max fibers down. Let's change the base and tip color so I can just see where exactly that's going. I don't need that many fibers. I certainly don't need them that long. And then I'm just gonna turn on gravity here and just kind of have those here, I'm also going to try and crank up that coverage a little bit so I can see better. And you know what? I'm going to say segments of maybe 10, profile of 4. So it's real geometry. Um, so there's some hair. I can even go in here to... I can try doing... Twist isn't what I'm really looking for, like clumping. You can start uh, clumping the stuff up, but you can also just say accept. And then there's the fast preview mode. But here's my geometry. Here's my fibers. You can even have a BC brush clumping in here. Uh, that'll maybe, oops, sorry, brush hair, brush groom, DG brush groom. Turbulent can sometimes give you a little bit of turbulence in here. Um, also, you may want to go into your brush settings and say there's a fiber mesh setting in here you may need to change, which is front collision tolerance. Drop that down to maybe 10 so it gets a little bit closer to your geometry. And let's also go in here so we can see a little bit better. You know, and you can kind of, and the, since this is real geometry, you can actually go through here and you can inflate these if you want. Um, oh, we need to turn off. So under, so this is a fast preview in here. So if you ever want to go in here to your, and if you want to see what it's going to really render like without fast preview, this is what the, the, the actual geometry is. You can go in here to, where can you go into? Uh, fiber mesh. I'm having the hardest time finding that. Underneath preview settings, turn off fast preview. There's the real geometry. And then uh, you can turn this on. You can take the previs down if you want to, but we'll turn that off. And then you can actually go through here and groom this type of thing. So in ZBrush, something like that. Um, can I align any object to another? There is new align tools coming out. Uh, I don't really you do aligning. If I want to align this brush, create insert mesh new. Now I can align it to any face that I want because it's literally just being aligned to that surface normal. If I want the same size, just control drag. But yeah, if I have just an object sitting out here, 
and I say split mass points and I'm like I want to hit make this thing go to this thing I don't know a way to do that in ZBrush but there is new align tools coming out in the next iteration of ZBrush if you watch the ZBrush Summit um, uh, I'm gonna do that which is make 3d sculpts look 2d hand-drawn yeah you can manually do it but also I mean I got a ton of that in this YouTube playlist here it was ZBrush 2020 28 19 I forget our station might be easier to look at 2019 yep this one here ZBrush 2019 what's new goes through a ton of that stylistic ink hand-drawn look using Windows 11 if if so how does ZBrush number two such a run on I think I'm still on Windows 10 let's see properties uh, more properties Windows 10 home yeah not Windows 11 just yet cool uh, yes yes just get caught up here thickness and spotlight uh, the spotlight thickness if you're if you're doing that is controlled by whatever mesh you have selected on your screen so for example if I split this off and I go into um, see let's see uh, comma key spotlight hard surface and I've got these kind of sitting out here and I want to make a hard surface shape and I click this little camera icon it's gonna be the thickness of whatever this is so if I scale this yeah, yeah, oops, this much and then I'm in spotlight and I you know you can even swap these out I can turn on quick select and I can go through here and yeah, let's, let's use this one so I've got this one here and I want to scale it up move it over and then I hit the camera key um, it's only gonna be that thick line a circle cut in a plane uh, if your plane is at an odd angle so you've got this here and it's just kind of just sitting out in the space like this and you would need to look straight at it Z modeler brush hover over a face there is a set camera perpendicular click on that face now your camera's perpendicular control shift slice circle Well, thank you, uh, Greg Ramey. Is there a way to round a cutout on a plane? For example, uh, is not round. You need to get it round. Um, yeah. So if it was like this, and it's like, oh, that looks like crap. Uh, one thing you can do is manually is you can go in here to smooth uh, brush, smooth. There's a smooth groups, which is just taking the smooth brush modifiers and setting it to six. It's the weighted smooth mode, and you can go through here and make it smooth, or you can literally just, I mean, in this, in this case, you can just go in here to masking and say mask our poly group border, invert that, polish by features, tap, tap. Um, you can also spherize. So if you have like this here, and you say spherize poly group all, do that uh, yeah you can also split point like um, 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 mark says in here there's a split point cavity mass of noise service followed by very short fiber mesh zero gravity just guessing yep you could do that too a um, couple different ways yeah and you know detailing up those shapes is another thing but anyway we're way over time oh my gosh thanks everybody i will see you next time I, we got pretty far i think we did pretty good i don't think there's a whole lot left oh other than like modeling the arcade which if you watch the you know on our station here um the arcade just slow it down to like 0.25 on youtube um it's kind of pretty much all in there like the shapes are pretty simple slice uh, Ziri mesh, 
slice zero mesh. Some of this stuff I modeled live. It was pretty embarrassing because I was having a hard time, but boom. Cool. All right. See you next time, which is probably going to be, gosh, December, unless I decide to stream at another time this month. But anyway, thanks, everybody. Have a good rest.